TNA Wrestling. Cross the line. to the main event mafia over 75 years of experience experience that demands respect the single most important thing that separates the men from the boys is respect it was designed to make us leaders leaders that have honor and respect and dignity this is the greatest assemblage of world champions to ever come together. Since we've been together, we've taken out who we wanted to, when we wanted to. Tonight, your poke ass belongs to Mafia. Nobody messes with the main event, Mafia. Yeah! I am Mick Foley. Take a look at me! I crossed a line and came to TNA. I may not be as good as I once was, but for one night, I will be as good as I ever was. Sting, I'm not just gonna beat you. I will rip you in half with a gore, gore, gore! Kurt, all I can think about is beating the out of you. I'm gonna do everything I can do to bring you down. Your whole world, as you know it, will come to an end. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Genesis. Tonight, live from Charlotte, North Carolina, TNA presents Genesis, our first pay-per-view of 2009. Who will take control in the war? The war for power and respect. Will it be the main event mafia, or will it be the TNA front line? Introducing team number one first from Bombay, India, the Guru, Sun Tuck. His tag team partner from Atlanta, Georgia, Jimmy Reeve. And their tag team partner from Osaka, Japan, Kiyoshi. As we open Genesis with this special unadvertised bonus match, we have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a day of uncertainty for TNA. Number one this past week, while training with AJ Styles, Christy Hemi severely hurt her neck, an injury that will require surgery and a change to tonight's Genesis card. And their opponents first from Nashville, Tennessee, two-time Rick Young. To address the knockout situation, Jim Cornette has ruled we will have a six-knockout tag match with Taylor Wilde, Roxy, and ODB versus the Contourage with the person who scores the pinfall getting a future knockout title shot. I mean, think of that situation. Somebody's going to get a shot at Kong, and it might be somebody that can get out of their shadow, a member of the Contourage. And his tag team partner is representing the Latino Nation, Amazon and Hernandez, the Latin American. Two, when it comes to uncertainty in TNA today, for reasons unknown, Rhino has not yet arrived here at the building in Charlotte, North Carolina. I can tell you, TNA management has made efforts to contact Rhino, but to no avail. I know speaking for you, 
done. We certainly hope that he's okay. Jim Cornette, representing TNA Management, is investigating, and we will update you, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as we hear anything. And I mean, let's be honest, something doesn't smell right about this situation, but all of a sudden, worry comes in. I mean, all of a sudden, somebody that you're expecting to be here for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship bout is a no-show, no conversation to have with the War Machine. We have no idea where he is, and as soon as we find out something, we'll let you know. But Mike, the situation, let's be honest, is putting that World Championship in doubt tonight. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. On the night here at Genesis, when the War Machine Rhino gets his shot, at Sting, and remember, Rhino knocked off Sting recently in a non-title match. Confidence at an all-time high for him. For him to no-show, it just, it just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense, and you brought it up, and I mean, that's something that has got to be going through Sting's mind. That's something that's got to be going through the main event mafia's mind, is the War Machine has proven that he can defeat Sting. And you know, sometimes that's all someone needs is that confidence, knowing that they can do, you know, something of that magnitude. It's kind of like we used to see with Taylor Wilde and Kong. You know, you just have that, that that matchup that works in your favor, and I think that's maybe the situation that we've got here tonight. And again, like we said, if we hear anything, we'll let you know immediately. How about the reaction here in Charlotte, North Carolina, for LAX, the Latin American Exchange? And the moment that I think about homicide, the moment I think about Hernandez, first thing that comes to mind, feast or fire. Well, absolutely. You think about it. Hernandez is holding a TNA World Heavyweight Championship match. I mean, he he can use that when he wants. Homicide also has an X Division title match that he can use when he wants, when the timing's right. We saw last week on Impact what timing's all about. How opportunistic was Jay Lethal and Consequences Creed Mike when they saw an opening, they saw an injured Robert Roode, they swooped in, came in, and won the title. Closed the door on the deal, became TNA World Tag Team Champions, and Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, Consequences Creed, they will put those TNA Tag Team title belts on the line later tonight here at Genesis. I'll tell you what, this is what I love about, about a match like this to start the show. To start to, sometimes it's just good to have a match that's just pure fun. And when you look at the talent out there, you know you're going to see some exciting action. Keep in mind, though, it's an elimination match. It's about pride. It's about being the last man standing. That's really the key also in the elimination match, Don. Once we get into the numbers game, we start off three on three. But after the eliminations, who knows what kind of a predicament that you could be in mid-ring collision. EY gets the better of it, takes down Jimmy Ray. Well, Eric Young, I think, wants to take out some frustration. I mean, think about it. He lost last Thursday that matchup against Alex Shelley and not able to, to go on to that X Division title match tonight. And uh, Eric Young, you know, he's won. Whoa. Oh, that big shoulder of Hernandez. He's just so impressive. Boy, and what a landing as Supermax used that slingshot maneuver, came in on Kiyoshi, and then crashed right down on him. There goes Kiyoshi up in the lights and taken high overhead with the big back body drop. I'll so impressive, Big Hernandez, Supermax is. Well, I'll tell you what, they won't be in the tag title match tonight, but that's one thing about LAX. They're just... To me, they're one of the perfect tag teams. Think about it. That's how strong the tag team is. As you see pure raw strength in action right there in the center of the ring. That's what makes this tag team. Think about it. LAX not even in the title match tonight. They'll see three teams vying for the tag team title. Check out the catapult right into Homicide with the clothesline for Kiyoshi. And then, oh, off the ropes. Caught him with that backsplash. Well, that's the drive-by. That's what happens when you snitch. Real close for the pin attempt right there by Homicide. Two count only with Kiyoshi able to power out. Homicide back to the offensive. Nailed him first with a headbutt. Sets him up in the corner. Caught him with the chop. Shoots him across and here he comes. Uh-oh. Kiyoshi was there and he was prepared. Lifted him up in the air. I'm going to tell you something. Homicide caught his chin on that bottom rope. It was right here in front of us. You could see it really rattled him, Mike. And check this out. You can see on the right-hand side of your screen, oh. TNA Management's Jim Cornette. He's pounding on the dressing room door of the main event mafia. We know that Cornette promised us that he was going to investigate the Rhino situation. And it looks to me, first of all, nobody answering the door for the main event mafia there, Don, as you can see. But it appears to me that Cornette, by going to the main event mafia, he feels like they have their fingerprints on this deal with Rhino not arriving here at the arena. I mean, if you're, uh, if you're doing police work on this situation, that's the first place you go. You go straight to the main event mafia and try to find out if they're behind something underhanded. And that's what Jim Cornette's trying to do. See another pin attempt there by Homicide as, as he's just been impressive here as he's turned things around. Now you can see him. He's got those arms. Oh, buddy, put him right on his back. Double underhook. Takes him high into the air. 
crashes him down. Sanjay, the guru, laid out, and Homicide is headed to the top rope. This crowd just on fire. Great wrestling fans here in Charlotte. The Homicide took too long and a little bit of hesitation, and somebody with the speed and the quickness of the guru, it's gonna be easy for him to get himself out of the way. Able to tag in, you see Kiyoshi now back in the ring. The star from the Orient. Tag team partner of the great Muda. Similar look as well with the face paint. Kiyoshi able to turn things around here on Homicide. And then you see the assist from both of his tag team partners. The Guru Sanjay Dutt as well as Jimmy Rave with that double team drop kick. And then the seated clothesline drops Homicide quickly on him. Kiyoshi able to get just a two count as you can see from referee Slick Johnson. Well, they, they're, they've got a good game plan. The best way of getting rid of uh, Hernandez is to get rid of Homicide. You know what I mean? Best way to get rid of Homicide is to get rid of Hernandez. You've got to go for one of those guys first. If they can eliminate Homicide right here, it's a great advantage because with Homicide, Hernandez throwing Eric Young on the same side, pretty powerful group right now of those three and you got to like what Jimmy Raven and, and the Guru and Kiyoshi are doing right now. They are dictating how this match goes as you see another two count. Big stomp by Rave leads to a pin attempt, sets up Homicide in the corner. You can see Homicide reaching over, trying to make contact, trying to at least let his tag team partners know that he is ready and needs a tag. Rave puts the boots to him and now takes that wrestling boot and puts it right across his throat. Look how he's putting it through the ropes on the other side and just applying that pressure, able to referee Slick Johnson able to break it as Jimmy Ray pulling him again over to their corner. Doing a great job of keeping Homicide isolated, Mike. Keeping Homicide away from Hernandez and Eric Young. Guru Sanjay Dutt now the legal man against Homicide. Crowd here in Charlotte trying to get this team of LAX and Showtime Eric Young back on the offensive. Takes him out and then just drove him down right across the edge of the ring, right across the apron. He went chest first. Uh, you can see Homicide is just taking a beating right now. I mean, they have just absolutely focused on him intently. 1-0. You can see Homicide again reaching, looking for somebody, and the Guru just pulls him right back over to their side. Smart tag team strategy employed here by the Guru Sanjay Dutt. Brings Homicide, the weakened Homicide of LAX, back over, as Don mentioned, to their side of the ring and tags in Kiyoshi, and now Kiyoshi gonna follow up. Boy, he can sense, you can just tell by the look here, Kiyoshi realizes that he's got an opportunity to try and put Homicide away and eliminate Homicide from this match, and then Homicide comes back, desperation move, T-boned him overhead, tag in, here comes Showtime Eric Young. I'll tell you what, great move though on Homicide's part is Kiyoshi had a kick to Hernandez's head, took him out, but that was just enough for Homicide to get his breath and get Eric Young in after the T-bone suplex, and look at Eric Young! Just cleaning house. That's what happens. You sit there and you wait and you get frustrated and you finally get in. Nice shoulder block through the ropes. Outside in shoulder block. Slides through the legs and plants him dead center. One, belly to belly two. suplex. Leads to a two count. I'll tell you what though. Eric Young so impressive. Did you see Jimmy Rave getting himself out? Here comes Whoa. Kiyoshi. He just sends Kiyoshi out on the other side as well. Eric Young not going to stop. Oh, Jimmy Rave was waiting. Beautiful oh. counter by Jimmy Ray. Wait, Wait a minute. minute. Tope got here. Homicide out of nowhere. Able to take down Jimmy Ray and Kiyoshi as well. Keep your eyes on the guru. Sanjay's going to fly. Here he goes. Oh, buddy. Poetry in motion as he takes everybody. But Supermax. Supermax is in the middle of that ring. Bodies laid out. I can see five of them directly in front of me at the broadcast table. Look out. Supermax. Whoa! He cleared it by three feet. Supermax takes them all out. Unbelievable. And the crowd appreciates what's happening here. As they know these guys are putting it all out there. And Supermax defies gravity. Yes, Big Hernandez in line eventually for that world title shot. Wait a minute. EY back in. Cover and two count on Ray. I'll tell you what, I almost stole one real quick. Everybody's still rattled after being knocked out by 300 pounds of Supermax. But Eric Young got himself back in the ring. But Jimmy Rave, nice boot to the jaw. But as he gets himself sitting on the ropes, Eric Young hits him with that right. Could we see a little Death Valley driver here? That's the plan, obviously. That's the strategy. But the Guru instead leapfrogs over and caught Hernandez unaware. Eric's one, got him down. Two, Cover, no. One. Save at the last second by the Guru. Boy, nice, nice awareness there by the Guru, Sanjay Dutt. 
able to come over and goes right after. Now look at this, Homicide turning it around. Man, you talk about a neck breaker. He just spun him around almost completely 360 degrees, but Kiyoshi was there, man. And man, you talk about a clothesline. <laughs> How about that one from Eric Young? He's gonna try and rock his world. He just rocked the world of Eric Young as everything's just breaking down. And there's Hernandez picking Jimmy Rave up and slamming him through. Oh. Nice drop kick by the Guru. I mean, it's a six-man tank. You've gotta be aware at all times of not only your opponents, your partners as well. And Big Hernandez just got caught unaware with that great drop kick off the top. Well, that just shows you what can happen. A guy the size of Sanjay Dunn. As you see, Jim Cornette still trying to get a hold of the main event mafia. Jerry Borash there with him to try to pick it up to hear the conversation, but they're not Guys, opening please. the door. Thanks. Main event oh, mafia not you. responding like, to Jim Cornette. The boss a series of offensive moves by Eric Young, punctuated by that big elbow off the top. And with the leg hook, Rave is still able to kick out. I'll tell you what, these guys are just beating the heck out of each other in this ring. And no elimination. Nobody's been eliminated. That's the key. I mean, what are we? 10 plus minutes into this match? Clothesline missed. That drop kick was on target. Meeting of the minds between the Guru and Jimmy Rave as they crash heads together. Sanjay shot off into the corner. Quickly able to avoid Eric and then catch him with both boots perfectly placed. And then comes directly across and nailed him with the leg drop. Took he's got the rope Two. for leverage. Oh, he's got it. Johnson, you've got to see that. As now you see the Guru is proud of what he did, but he had those ropes and he used it for leverage and he saw where Slick Johnson was turned around and didn't see it. Homicide though, trying to straighten things up here real quick to get that numbers game back on par. Gringo Cutter oh, leads man. to the potential Gringo. for the Gringo Killer. Oh. oh, Sanjay lands on his feet and dives across and tags in Jimmy Rave. LAX here, we talked about that numbers game earlier two-on-three situation for Homicide and Hernandez. You can see Homicide just doing whatever he can to try to eliminate one. Jimmy Ray, though, been awful impressive in this matchup. He's just had a lot of great sneak attacks, and Homicide thinks he's got it lined up. Look at Jimmy Ray using quickness, though. He's rolling up. Two. Oh, my gosh. Homicide is gone. It is Supermax one-on-three. Wow. Think of the odds here and how quickly that this match turned around in the elimination rules where all of a sudden Big Supermax, Big Hernandez, sees both Eric Young and his LAX tag team partner Homicide taken out of the match. I'll tell you what though, that's you know that's the numbers game you want to get to Hernandez, but look how he just turns them around so he can double clothesline both of them. As you see Hernandez, look at that strength as he just shoots Jimmy Rave all the way across the ring. <laughs> I mean, he's just using nothing but pure force. It's about brute strength now, Mike. Guru, Rave, Kiyoshi, just one elimination away for a win, but then you look up and you see that that one individual is Big Super Max, Guru for the ride. Quick attempt here, gonna try and sunset flip over, but good luck with the 300 pounder. Oh, look at this, going for the Cracker Jack. Oh. And he sends him all the way across. This is just unbelievably impressive. But you know what, he needs to start eliminating these guys. The longer they stay in, the better chance they have. But right now, it is all Hernandez. Kiyoshi up. And Kiyoshi on the shoulders. Here Only one way to go. Border toss. Oh, man. Straight down, it's straight academic. cover, straight three count. Kiyoshi has been eliminated. Well, all of a sudden, two on one with the elimination of Kiyoshi. And here comes the guru. We talked about having those eyes in the back of your head. Hernandez saw him coming, didn't work this time. May have worked oh. the first. Sit out one, power bomb. Two, three. Oh, Jimmy Rave, I just run out of the building right now. Back turn, and Jimmy Rave gonna take advantage of that. Caught him with that clubbing blow, gonna try and shoot him across. No chance. Avoids him, sidestepped him, and then caught him unaware that time with a forearm shot. Jimmy Rave gonna try to steal one here, but as you see Hernandez using that strength to get himself level on the on the ropes, now working himself up. Jimmy Rave going up high and quick, gonna try to hit Hernandez with something big and devastating, but he just gets pushed off. Oh no. From the top? Whoa! Oh! Pancake City! Done! Here is your winner! Oh, we're rocking in Genesis! Hernandez with the victory! And here comes his LAX partner, Homicide in. I'm thinking 
Feaster fired in that world title shot. I'm telling you right now, if you watch that, I don't know if the champions should be pretty darn worried because any time Hernandez decides to cash it in, it could be trouble. He's incredible. Let's send it to JB with Jim Cornette. He's still outside that main event mafia room. I don't know what that sounds like to Chinese torture. My hand I'm getting ready for a match. Shot. We are getting ready for a match. What do you Look, want? There's a problem. Nobody has seen or heard from Rhino all day, and knowing the main event mafia like I do, and knowing he's got a world title match tonight against Sting, I'm smelling a rat. Looking at your little beady eyes, and anything knows about a rat, it's you. Listen, I don't care about Rhino. Go fight somebody else. We don't care about Rhino. Look, hey, it just seems awful funny that Rhino's never late a day in his life, and all of a sudden he's got a world title match against your guy, and nobody can find him. I want to know what you know. What I do know is Rhino's a drunk. He's been in and out of rehab more than Jeff Conaway. Oh, come on. Why don't you go? Since Charlotte is a cesspool and they have a lot of gutters, Go check one or he's probably pissing on himself somewhere. Oh, come on! Where was the lab? Oh. That exhibition title is up for grabs. I'm making it my personal quest to get it around this waist. And why? Because Detroit needs heroes. Elevates him up and oh man, Lethal just got dropped right down on his head! One, two, three. Oh my gosh, he has put him up on the shoulders. Here it is! Third time's the charm! Cradle oh, shot! Cover! Three hands! Knocked him with the kick! Gonna try and put him away! Cradle shot! Plants him! Cover! Two and yeah! Good things happen to good people. But let's face it, I guess tonight, the not so great Muda just wasn't good enough. Alex Shelley faces Eric Young. If he beats Eric Young, that means it's the two of you in the finals of the X Division title tournament. Kick him off in time. Oh, oh Saban with the referee not looking. Just a vicious kick to the face. I don't know if he can overcome this. Here's that slice bread. Oh, he hits it. Here we go. One, two, he's got it. They predicted it, and now we know it's going to be Chris Saban or Alex Shelley. Best friends and tag team partners Alex Shelley and Chris Saban face off for the TNA X Division Championship. Back live at Genesis. Check out the crowd on hand here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And as you can see by the tournament bracket, we started with eight X Division competitors. We've narrowed the field down to the final two as you see how the Motor City Machine Guns advance to the finals. And yes, it is time for the first of our three championship matches tonight at Genesis. It is the final of the X Division Tournament that will determine the next champion. We break it down with the X Factors and this controversial situation surrounding Sheikh Abdul Bashir, Eric Young, and the referee Shane Sewell forced Jim Cornette to hold up the title and create the tournament. From the moment the brackets were announced, the Motor City Machine Guns, they predicted they would both advance, and bottom line, they both delivered. Executive shareholder Mick Foley made it clear to both Alex Shelley and Chris Saban he would settle for nothing less than 100% from both individuals. Who will emerge tonight as X Division champion, and how will it affect the future of the guns? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the finals of the TNA X Division Championship Tournament. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Detroit, Michigan, representing the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley! You, know, you brought up the question in, in, in your X Factors about these two guys and how they would work together and the warning that Mick Foley gave. I really don't even think that was necessary because when you're talking about the X Division Championship on the line, eventually you go past that friendship stage. And his opponent also from Detroit, Michigan, also representing the Motor City Machine Guns, Chris Saban! You know, at first thought, I would agree with you, but then, Don, uh, take into account everything that we've seen over the course of the past several months involving the Motor City Machine Guns. The all-out cockiness of Alex Shelley, the way that he has treated Mick Foley, the executive shareholder, as we see actually cheering his opponent in this match. Well, I expect that. I mean, these guys are best friends. 
And I'll tell you something, though. The big question that I've always wondered about these two, and we watch them together, and they are something special. I mean, these guys have such a continuity when they work together as the guns that it is impressive. Again, you mentioned about their, their cocky side and their disrespectful side, but I've always wondered, in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, who would be the better of the two? Tonight, we're going to find out. Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, who knows each other better than these two guys do? Boy, they know each other inside out. No question about that. And I think you're going to have to vary your offense here. You're going to have to come up with some moves that's going to keep your opponent off guard. Surprise the opposition. At the same time, I mean, God, they, they have a set pattern the way that they wrestle. Possibly it's the way that you defend moves that you're already familiar with that will prove to be the difference. I still think there's going to be a situation in this matchup when one guy hits the other guy with a little bit of extra oomph, with a little bit of extra force that the other one perceives as maybe playing a little dirty. And it's just what competition does. It doesn't mean they can't leave the ring friends. But I'll tell you something, I think you're going to see a point in this matchup where you're going to realize it's all about the X Division title. When it comes to that X Division title, you talk about Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. Saban's been there before. Multi-time X Division champion. At the same time, you almost have to take a, a, a double take, a double look yeah. at, the, at the records. The fact that Alex Shelley has never been X Division champion. Well, you know what? I've always put that moniker on the guru, Sanjay Dutt. But when mm -hmm. you think about it now, Alex Shelley, another one of those great X Division type competitors that's never held that belt. Chris Saban's held it four times, I believe. I believe he's going for number five uh, tonight, if I can just recall right. But Alex Shelley, and that's another thing. What a motivation is that going to be for Alex Shelley? Trying to capture that belt for the first time. And, and, and on Chris Saban's side, he feels like he's somebody that owns that belt, that has ownership of it. He wants to bring it home again. Early stages of this one-on-one -on -one matchup, you see Shelley working on the leg, working on the knee of his Guns tag team partner, Chris Saban. Saban not about to tap quickly, rolls over and then goes back. He's got the body scissors applied at the same time, cranking on the neck with that chin lock. But every time, though, you can realize, though, Alex Shelley knows a quick counter to get out of the situation. Chris Saban knows a quick counter. You're going to have to catch somebody by surprise. You're going to have to basically rattle their cage to where they're not thinking straight, to where you can get them and do things to them that they're not able to respond as quickly as they are right now. Kind of what I anticipated when I thought about this match pre-Genesis, sort of a wrestling lesson here from both Shelley and Saban. Put yourself in the position of the crowd here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Who do you root for? Which one of the guns? Well, I mean, they, even though they're just so brash and they just can just just make you so mad with their attitude, you're always impressed with their in-ring work. I mean, I just think these are two of the best competitors in wrestling today. They really are special to watch. And to be able to see them take each other on, I mean, this is perfect. But you know what? It's just still one of those things where you don't know who to pull for. I mean, they're both cocky. They're both arrogant. Who do you side with? Do you want to see the guy get it for the first time, or do you want to see a guy do something in the exhibition that I don't know who's held that belt five times? Wow. Check out the reaction AJ. here around the ringside area, Don, as you see what you just talked about seconds ago. Love them, hate them. And I'm sure you're probably more towards the hate him side. At the same time, you've got to appreciate the in-ring ability of these two. And you saw it, many of the fans around the ringside area stepping up to their feet here with a standing ovation for the opening minutes of this match. Hey, I'm sure when you were their age, 23, 24, 25, you were pretty brash too and pretty cocky yourself. And I think it know, goes with the territory. It does, it, especially when you're put in, the, in a high-profile life like these guys are and they're always trying to prove that they're as good as somebody else. And, and I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I just can't hate these guys. They're just so good in the ring. You know, I mean, there are times when you want to see them get it, get their comeuppance, as they say, but they're just so fun to watch, and when they work together, it's incredible. Look at this. Chris this, Saban just follows them right to those ropes. This may be that one of those early exchanges that you talked about. Getting a little feisty here when it comes to the punches, the forearm shots, and the kicks. That kick was right on the money to the midsection, and then a drop kick caught him right in the top of the head. I'll tell you what, he didn't quite get him with a full extension as, as Alex Shelley was just far enough away where it was more of a glancing blow but that's the kind of shot I'm talking about. If he'd have hit that a little sharper, a little fresher, he could have just rocked Alex Shelley and put him into La La Land, and that's how you can take over in a situation like this. Now check this out. Got the arm 
seized at the same time he drops down. He's got Shelly in a position here where about his only escape is going to be to extend the leg and make contact with that bottom rope. This is a this is a situation here where Chris Saban's trying to beat Alex Shelley at his own game. Alex Shelley's such a good mat wrestler. Alex Shelley has so many unique moves, and, and Chris Saban's showing Alex, his, his, his partner and his friend, hey, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve you don't even know about. It's always been when I think about the Motor City machine guns, I think about Saban and his high risk top rope moves, and at the same time, the mat wrestler that Alex Shelley is with the various unique submissions and the like. And you're right, Saban here in the early stages trying to beat him in his own game. I'll tell you what, though, if these guys can hit the, the cradle shocker, if they can hit the sliced bread, they can end it in a hurry. Oh, nice shot by Alex Shelley. I'll tell you what, he didn't hold back there. Shelley going over. Chris Saban beats him to it. Now Saban's suicide dive right through the ropes, crashes into Alex Shelley, knocks him right into the announce table. That was a case where obviously they know each other so well, what we've been talking about from the opening bell. But at the same time, because of the quickness of Chris Saban, Shelly just didn't have that opportunity, Don, to react and move out of the way. What was the word Mick Foley used? He said, if I see a level of suckitude, well, I, th I think that has been proven. That's not going to be the case. And that's why you got to like these guys. They are competitors. They've taken this serious from the moment they got there. Their goal was to make sure one of the two would bring that belt home. That's going to happen. That's a reality. Now you see the competitive nature of these guys. No question about it. I don't think we're going to be using the word suckitude here, and I no. don't think we're going to be thinking about Kaz Meyer and Oz from 92, like Mick Foley referenced on Impact. Whoa! Oh, man, did you Are see you that? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Is there any chance? That was unbelievable. And he had Saban in an unbelievable predicament, and he does the somersault, and the crowd loves what they just saw. Yeah, we gotta I, see I know that. what you wanted to do. You wanted to call for the replay. Oh. Don West playing director out here at the broadcast table. Sorry, that, that, that was a hell of a move. He apologizes <laughs> to Keith Mitchell, but, boy, that was a great shot. Oh, you had to see that again for people to understand the difficulty factor. I mean, if we're throwing up signs, you're getting nine eights, nine sevens, nine fives. Russian judge, I think, is even going to give him a 9-8 on that. And trust me, Keith Mitchell, David Sahadi, they can do their job out in the truck just fine without your help, buddy. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. I guess those guys aren't buying me a beer after work now. Oh, no, nope. not shot. Nope, but it looks like I got my first yeah. two rounds taken yeah. care of. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, this is just a fun matchup. This is what you thought it was going to be for the X Division title. And, and right now, Alex Shelley, after that high-impact move, that you got to see has taken control. He knows he's in a situation, but one thing about Chris Saban, wait a minute, one, two, not enough. One thing about Chris Saban, though, the longer you let him stay alive out there, the cobwebs are gonna clear. And I mean, that guy, we've always talked about him. From the first day we saw him, we saw a potential like nobody else. Now check this out, submission hold, sort of a, a modified abdominal stretch, a variation of that classic move that, that dates back some 50 plus years in professional wrestling. And Saban at this point, he just doesn't really have anywhere to go. Check out the ring positioning, dead center in the middle. Well, that's what Alex Shelley's trying to do is just stretch him out and just cause pain. But look at what Saban's putting the point of that elbow right there above the knee, right there in that part of the little Charlie horse area, just putting that elbow there. And I'll tell you what though, Alex Shelley spun around and hit him with an elbow. Oh, he went was going for the sliced bread, but he couldn't hit it. Here we go. Up to the shoulders. Attempt here, possibly at that cradle shock, but you can see that Shelly was able to fight it off. Elevate him over, and Saban goes down face first into oh, the mat. He landed right on his nose, and I'll tell you what. That, oh, nice kick by Chris Saban. Timed it perfectly. I didn't think he played a little possum there. He waited. He knew Alex Shelly was going to go for the kill, and he caught him right in the middle on that leg. That time, it was flush in the mouth. You know, if you've been watching this match from the opening bell, I I've seen the strategy of Alex Shelley working on the neck of Chris Saban. And I think that possibly there was something to that working on the neck of Saban that prevented him from putting him away with the cradle shot. I'll tell you what, though. These guys have not used any dirty tactics. I mean, this has been a by-the-book match from these two. So obviously they have respect for each other. They don't have respect for anybody else, but they do have a respect for each other that the best man's going to win this matchup. I mean, you can just feel the shot. Oh! Saban just caught him hard, and now Shelly's trading him with him. I think you can talk to me all night long about mutual respect. We see that inverted atomic drop, clothesline misses, and then a kick right into the knee of Shelly. 
I still, Don, really believe that there's no way after you have a match like this, the high stakes match with the X Division title on the line, the high impact with the clothesline first, and then the shot in the corner. I don't think that you still are just tag team partners on the same page following this yeah, match. Yeah, I agree. And this a match like this will change you. I'll tell you the good thing about this match, though, it's making us forget the Rhino situation. I mean, you saw Jim Cornette still not getting any answers. What a DDT! That's it! Ten. Two, Two and oh! oh you Saban oh. almost did it again and became X Division champ. Whoa, was that instinct. I mean, that was just hearing the cadence of the count and knowing that three was coming and it was a split second. But I was mentioning that this match is so incredible. We got to see a replay of this. Watch this DDT. That's how you put it down. That should have ended it. Alex Shelley just showing unbelievable intestinal fortitude and hanging through that, Mike. Boy, that was poetry in motion. Spiked his opponent, dropped him right on his head. Here he goes. Waits, springboard up, right into the arm bar. Oh, here he goes. Now he's got it. He's got the cross face applied. Pulling back with everything he's got. All the pressure applied. We talked about it earlier. The fact that he's been working on the head, working on the neck of Saban, and now quickly rolls over. And I thought he was going to go for the pin and stood back up to the to their feet. Double underhook. Saban tries to counter and does, and he goes behind. I mean, these guys are putting on a clinic right now. It's, I'll tell you what, this invokes those X Division memories of, of, of Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles in the early days. I mean, this is this is what this needed. I mean, this was a great idea on oh. the tournament as Alex Shelley just put Saban's face in that turnbuckle hard. That is known as a sudden stop. Face first, right into the corner. And now Shelley feeding off the crowd, and he can sense that he's got Saban rocked here. What's he going to do to try and put him away? I mean, he was nonchalant about it, but he was thinking about, no, no, wait a minute. Oh, Chris Saban turning around that quickly. And look at him go right back after Shelley. Oh, my gosh, he can break his neck. Two, again, he kicks out of the last second. Oh, oh was man. That a vicious shot. Bridging Tiger style suplex that time, and he almost had him beat. What a great, what a competitive match this is for the X Division Championship. I mean, just watching that, hearing that thought, I mean, that'll show you right there. That might be the kind of thing, if I'm Alex Shelley, I'm thinking, whoa, wait a minute. That was a little risky. And look at him just trying to paintbrush him, but. Chris Saban spins that kick on the gut and then hits him on the side of the head. That one really drilled him. And here goes Saban off the ropes. And he gets caught with the clothesline. Turned him inside out. Elevated up. Here he goes. Here we go. Pin him. One, two. Oh, not enough. Alex Shelley wanting to get that first belt. Chris Saban saying he wants another one. Frustration on the face of Alex Shelley, mirrored by many in the crowd here at ringside who came up to their feet in anticipation of what they thought was going to be the three count that would crown Alex Shelley as the new X Division champion. Back out to the apron and now making his way slower than usual. And that's just because this match has gone so long up to the top. That enables Saban to follow up. You see the chops while Shelley is up there on the top rope. And Saban going to position the legs of his opponent and Gunn's tag team partner so that he can go up to the top for a potential move. And Saban from the top tries to snap it off. But you see the Hurricane Rana has no effect because Shelley hooked that top steel cable. Shelley just power slams him down and, and, and power bombs him down. And here he goes. Going to try to maybe hit that frog splash. Finish Chris Saban off here. He wants to feel the effect. He wants to remember the moment. But doing that took too long, and Saban got the knees up in time. Now Shelly in trouble, and let's see if Saban can use those knees to put him away and become X Division champion again. Shelly down, Saban first up to his feet. Here goes Chris up to the top. Again, slower than normal. And will that enable Shelly? Yes, to sidestep him and drive him right down to the canvas. Here comes Shelly, much quicker this time up to the top and frog splash to the back. Well, here he goes, he's not done yet. He's rolled him over. Now he wants to hit the frog splash to the front. Double whammy on him. Here he goes again and he hits it this time. Here we go. One, two, no! Oh my God! Chris Saban kicked out at the last split second. I just thought it was over. Wow, what a match this has been. The finals of the X Division Tournament. The two members of the Motor City Machine Guns, Shelly and Saban. You're damn right it's awesome. 
crowd appreciating it. They, I mean, this is one of those, whoever's hand gets raised deserves it. Period, end of story. Oh, I love how these guys just know each other so well, even at this point in the match after being out there for one, a clothesline. Talk about taking your head off. That was That's it. it. Decapitation clothesline. Cradle shock. He's got him hooked Bam. and plants him. Here it is. One, two, you have got to be kidding. He barely and, brother, I mean barely, barely got the shoulder up. That's one of those, I think, where when, when Alex Shelley was in it, he had planned on being in it, and he just somehow was mentally strong to take the shot, and instead of being shocked by it, pardon the pun, he was able to just wait it out, and I mean, it was barely, but impressive. Shelley positioned on top, straddling that top rope, and Saban's gonna take him up. Wait a minute, cradle oh, shock oh, from well. the middle rope. Well, Shelley, Shelley fighting it off at the elbows. He's not getting away from that. And what a kick! I mean, that he was still able to get that extension from this point. Pulling Saban down, he wants to slice bread. Super kick rocked him. Will the slice bread put him away? One, two, oh my God! You can't, I mean, everything they've done, you can't even be surprised by it now. Everything, These guys are incredible. everything but a three count. Oh, this is unbelievable. Crowd knows they're watching something special, folks. I'll tell you, this is what we needed, Mike, to get our mind off the Rhino situation. And of course, the situation with the women's championship not being done tonight, this is just, this is what it's all about here. This is competition. This is professional wrestling. Boy, almost feeling like that resurgence in the X Division picture here. Here comes Slice Bread again, but he lands on his feet as Saban was able to shrug him off. But it is Shelley is favoring his leg, favoring the knee, favoring the ankle. Oh, he's trying to pull the shoe off right now, and I think Chris Saban realizes it. That his friend, I mean, just the way he frenetically went after the foot and, and trying to get the thing loosened up. The referee now coming over. Chris Saban. Wait a minute. What? One, two. He tricked him. He tricked him harder. The new TNX Division champion, Alex Shelley. I told you, Mike. I told you. One of them was going to tip cross line. I mean, it was all about the belt in the end. Historic moment here at Genesis. Alex Shelley becomes TNA X Division champion for the very first time by defeating his longtime Motor City Machine Guns tag team partner Chris Saban. And it was a hell of a match, there's no denying that. Buddy, that's the price of admission right there. We got to show you a replay package of some of the high spots. And here we go. This was the beginning of this matchup. You started feeling it right there. You knew something special was happening. And then you saw the suicide dive. You saw the innovation by Alex Shelley in that situation and the ferocious DDT by Saban. Check out that suplex with the double underhook. And then the frog splashes, two of them, both sides. And this, this feigning of the injury by Shelley enables him to roll Saban up. And yes, gain the three count. And in the process, he becomes X Division champ. Well, I'll tell you what, he had to do whatever it took. But now both these guys, Chris Saban, look at each other out of respect. Going to try and stay on top of that Rhino situation. Send it to the back. JB with Jim Cornette. Look, Jim, I know today's already chaotic for you, but give us an update. What's going on with Rhino? I don't know what's going on with Rhino. Nobody's seen him. Nobody's heard from him. He doesn't answer his cell phone. We can't find him, and I can't get to the bottom of it because I've been asking. I'm going to try, but we got bigger problems. I just got a phone call from Kevin Nash's doctor at the hospital. He got a staph infection in his elbow in Japan. He told me yesterday that he's going to load up on antibiotics, and he was going to fight tonight anyway. But now his doctor just called. He's been admitted... He may have blood poisoning, and he risks death if he wrestles tonight. So we got no Kevin Nash. I don't know what we're going to do. As a matter of fact, I'm calling right now somebody more important Courtney. than me. I'm calling the, hey, Cor Corny, hey, I heard you wanted to see me. I'll tell you what, I'm fired up about returning to the ring tonight. Cactus, we got a problem. Problem. We got no Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash is in the hospital. Yeah, yeah, stay. yeah right. No, right. I've confirmed it. It's not main event mafia crap, and it's not Nash's shenanigans. Kevin Nash in the hospital with staph infection. So where exactly does that leave us? He can't wrestle tonight, and I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know if we postpone the wait, match. Wait, no, no, or no, 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 no. You know what? We promised the fans a six-man tag. We didn't promise it to them a month from next Thursday. We promised it to them tonight. 
at Genesis. So this is what I want you to do, Corny, and forget for a second that I'm wrestling. Look at me as the executive shareholder. I'm telling you, Jimmy, go over there, tell the mafia, there will be a six-man match tonight. They have until the bell to find a suitable replacement. And if they don't, then we'll have ourselves a little handicap match on hand. But a match will take place tonight. You want me to tell them that? Tell them! Are you kidding me? This night is just unbelievable. On the heels of the situation involving the Christy Hemi injury, followed by the news that Rhino has not yet arrived here at the building in Charlotte, North Carolina, we are just informed that Kevin Nash has been hospitalized with a staph infection. Well, one thing was clear, though. You heard Mick Foley. One way or another, he's going to make his in-ring debut at TNA tonight. Whether it's a handicap match or not, he's going to get his hands on the main event mafia. Don, on that note, ladies and gentlemen at home, let's run down what we have still in store for you tonight here at Genesis. Well, they finally get to settle their issues in Inside the ring, it's Sheik Abdul Bashir against Shane Sewell at the wrestler. TNA World Tag Team titles on the line. Two challengers, one champion. Matt Morgan, the Monster Abyss, Beer Money Incorporated, now challengers, lethal and greed the champs. One of the most anticipated matches in TNA history. It's the rematch. It is revenge. It's Jarrett Angle. It is scheduled to be the War Machine Rhino challenging the icon Sting for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Cornette staying on top of that. We'll update you as soon as we know about Rhino. And another update will have to take place. But Mick Foley, AJ Styles, and Brother Devon will be in the ring. Booker T, Scott Steiner, and somebody of their choosing, or it'll be a handicap match. I've got to tell you, this next matchup Coming up tonight here at Genesis is one that you and I are really looking forward to, and I'm guessing the fans in attendance as well. Let's recap it for you. Check out this video package. Sheik Abdul-Bashir, referee Shane Sewell. I need this job. I can't afford to lose this job. But if there's one thing I can't stand, is when somebody puts their hands on me and physically provokes me. This situation involving the Sheik and Shane Nobody is going to push me around, and I'm not going to back down from him or from anybody. You're on probation. If you touch anybody, lay your hands on another wrestler while you're a referee here in TNA, you're done. You're Shane done. Sewell, you've got to walk away from this. You cannot get involved. You know the consequences. Oh, how much can you expect him to take before he just explodes? What are you doing? You just don't get it, do you? You're a referee. You're not a wrestler. Shane, you're fired. No, oh, come on. For three days, as of Sunday at Genesis, you're back on the TNA payroll as a wrestler. And your first match is going to be one-on-one -on -one with Sheik Abdul Bashir. Sheik Abdul Bashir battles referee Shane Sewell. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Genesis continues with the following one fall contest. Introducing first from Tehran, Iran, the Middle Eastern nightmare, Sheik Abdul Bashir. One thing I can say with certainty, whether you're a TNA wrestler, a TNA fan at home, or here in Charlotte, North Carolina, one of the announcers like Don and I, JB, or even a referee, from the second this guy set foot in TNA, you've been sick of him. He just gets under your skin. The anti-American rants that we have heard from Sheik Abdul Bashir. And he's American, Mike. That's the thing that galls me more than any of it. Born and bred me off. Tell you what, he uses it for motivation, though. You got to give him that. We knew they'd be on his side, 
have seen the kind of fire exhibited by Shane Sewell in recent weeks on Impact broadcast. The fact that, that he's laid down the law and said, you know what, nobody, and I mean nobody's going to push me around. That's the kind of fire that you got to respect. Well, it, it, it's an emotional bond that people have with Shane Sewell. They've seen it. But I'll tell you something. Unlike the last time when, when Bashir knew he was pushing the line and he knew he was taking, taking Shane where he wanted to take him, this time, she kept knew Bashir is going to be ready. I'll tell you what, Shane Sewell caught him by surprise last Thursday on Impact. Tonight, she kept over Sheer, and we've seen him. We've seen how he can be. He'll be prepared for anything that Shane Sewell's going to bring at him. And Shane going right after it. Maybe a mistake. You might want to be a little more tempered here to start off. It's easy for you to say when you've got a guy on the opposite side of the ring, when you've got your opponent who is doing everything possible to antagonize, to physically provoke you into getting fired. Jim Cornette put him on probation. And check this out. Oh, he's just gnawing right on the head of Sheikh Abdul Bashir. And Bashir thought he had outsmarted the system, Don, as Jim Cornette fired Shane Sewell. It fired him for three days as a referee, and he becomes a wrestler here tonight. And there goes the Sheikh directly into the steel. Well, I'll tell you what, this isn't a wrestling match here tonight. This is a fight. This is a war. This is, think about the freedom that Shane Sewell's got to feel. He's always had to hold back. He's always had to worry about his job. Well, Jim Cornette gave him permission. He can unleash holy fury on Sheik Abdul-Bashir if he gets the opportunity. But I'll tell you what, Shane Sewell taking advantage of it. I thought he came out a little too hot, but you know what? He's just taking that fire right to Sheik Abdul-Bashir. Look at it. Oh, Whoa. right into the steel steps. And man, that hurts. That just flung him into the steel. And you can see referee Earl Hebner trying to instruct Shane Sewell, get back in the ring. And I had an opportunity to talk to Earl Hebner about being put in this position. And he told me that he had spoken with Shane Sewell and told him he was going to be impartial and call this right down the middle. And that's got to be hard. I mean, you know, as a colleague and somebody, and they've watched what Bashir's done to Shane Sewell. And, you know, as referees, they know that they can have that same thing happen to them. It's got to be hard, but Earl Hebner's a pro. Earl Hebner knows that, hey, his job's being scrutinized right now. He's got to call this down the line. Check out this quick roll-up by Shane, but you see there the kick out by the Sheik. I know we talked about this several times during Impact broadcast, the interview that I had with Shane Sewell detailing his extensive wrestling background. Well, I mean, this guy is, is, is a veteran. I mean, that's the great thing about it. He, he just because of the situation in his career, he had to take over refereeing so he could keep putting food on, on the place. We could feed his family. Now he's got himself back in shape. He's got himself in wrestling shape. And, oh, he's just taking it right to it. It's all coming back to him like riding a bike. Deep arm drag and now working on the arm of Sheik Abdul Bashir. They love it here in Charlotte, North Carolina, Genesis. Sheik going to try and get back up to his feet. Imperative for him if he's going to mount any kind of an offense here. Sets up Shane against the ropes. Referee Hebner warning him about the break, and he does not break clean. Instead, it's the boot and then the series of punches. Well, this guy is the ultimate opportunist. I mean, uh, Bashir will find a way to take a shortcut. Shane Sewell's got to be ready for it. He's got to expect it. That's just his modus operandi. That's how Sheik Abdul Bashir operates. And as he comes off the ropes, Sewell misses with the chop, catches him with the cross body block right into the pin and two. I'll tell you what, he, he is relentless. He's just going right at it. And you can see Bashir, his, his whole game plan has just been foiled. He's walking out of the ring, going to try to get things figured out. And you know what? He's deciding it isn't worth it to him. He's just walking right up the ramp. And Shane Sewell's not going to let that happen. Follows right up the ramp, clubs him from behind, and decks him. And again, you can see Earl Hebner warning him, get it back in the ring. Folks, I, I want to update everybody. We still have no news of the war machine. Rhino has not been seen or heard from. And of course, the Kevin Nash news as well. Staph infection, he is in the hospital as we speak. Check out the Sheik and oh, elevate. God, Shane please. up into the air and crotch him directly on that steel guardrail. Ooh. That'll turn it around faster than anything can turn it around. I mean, L yeah. listen, listen to the Sheik. He rolls back in and immediately tells referee Earl Hebner, count him, count him out. You know the Sheik would like nothing more than a win like this and what's, Hebner is up to, he's up to four, but sort of slowing down the yeah, cadence of the count. you see the eye contact he just made? I, I'm sorry, that four to five was like six seconds. As Shane Sewell's trying to get himself into the ring, but 
It's, it's, you got to give Bashir credit. Smart move. He wanted to make sure Earl Hedmer started that count. Shane Sewell just listening to the count. You can't blame him. And he got himself back in there, but that's what Bashir needed. That crotch shot that he took on top of the guardrail. That's the kind of thing that turns it around, and you're watching it right here. Neck breaker, pin. Barely two, right back on, and you can see from the mount, look at him pound those shots to the top of the head. Well, Bashir is just, he, he really is good, and when he gets it going, his nether pin attempt there, and another two count, he's just, he's relentless, he'll keep on you, he won't stop, he's just that, that, that fly that just won't leave you alone. I mean, he knows he's antagonizing, he knows he's getting under your skin, he's, he's saying anti-American things to you while he's grabbing a hold of you, just doing whatever he can to piss you off. I mean, that's just what he does, and he does it well. Former X Division champion Sheik Abdul Bashir neutralizing Shane Sewell at this point. Shane trying to feed off the crowd reaction here. They're trying to get him back in this match, but just as soon as he does and gets right back up to his feet, the Sheik is there to start the offense once again. The chops in the corner. And that may be just the thing that fires up Shane Sewell with every chop. You can see that Shane is about ready to turn it loose. I'll tell you what, I mean, that guy just gets himself motivated. I mean, the, the more you hit him, the more he gets fired up. And look at him coming right after Bashir. Just wicked chops to the chest. And he gets the boot up just in time to the face. And uh oh, that time he allowed himself to be trapped. Here we go. One, two. Oh, he got his shoulder up. Caught him with that double leg, spine bustered him directly down to the mat and went for the pin. Still life left in the referee, Shane Sewell, as he's picked up now at the hair. And you can see that Bashir just takes the point of the elbow and drops it down repeatedly across the back of the head and then the series of knees right into the small of the back. Yeah, and then shoulder blades where he pulls it down on too. I mean, it's, it's those things like that that just take you so out of your game. And that's what Bashir is doing right now. He's just grounding Shane Sewell. He's just totally frustrating him. And you know, Shane, he likes to get himself fired up and worked up and, and, and have the whole ring to work with. Well, Bashir right now is taking that away from him. He's vicious. He's sadistic with those shots. And one would anticipate those knees directed into the back of Shane Sewell, potentially down the line, trying to weaken him for maybe the camel clutch. Well, I, I, I think one thing about Shane Sewell that really intimidates Bashir is just just the way he fights, just the way he throws those punches like you're seeing right now. And he knows that, that Shane Sewell's gonna really unleash him because he has the freedom to do so tonight. So he's gonna try to do anything he can to take that game out of play. Big power move that time. The offense could turn this thing around as Shane left his feet and drove all of his body weight right into the Sheik. Took him down, but you see at the same time, Shane Sewell down as well and looks like Sheik Abdul-Bashir may be the first up. Well, I'll tell you what, people don't realize what it takes out of you to hit an impact move like that. I mean, you're you're just taking all of your energy and putting it into that, and then all of a sudden you hit the mat, and it, it takes you out, but you can just see by the expression in Shane's face, he's got himself back fired up. Nice block, nice right, and look at those rights now. I mean, they got a purpose. Refocused on the task at hand, elevated high goes Bashir, up in the air with a back body drop, and as soon as he gets up, he gets driven right down, running clothesline that time. And notice that Bashir goes to the corner and Shane right on him. Elevates himself up into the air and then drops down. That was potentially low, but there's that side bulldog face One, plant. Two. Pin, no. Oh. I'll tell you what, the guy's impressive. I mean, he's thought about it. He's put so much thought into the matchup. He hasn't just gone all haywire and just tried to kill Bashir. You know what I mean? He's actually just really put a lot of thought in his strategy. But something as simple as that jawbreaker right there by Bashir could turn it over, but nice elbow. And now Sewell going up, headed up to the top rope. He senses that he may have him weakened sufficiently. Comes off the top, One, cross two. body. Not enough, but you can feel it's getting closer. He's wearing Bashir down. Every time Bashir turns it around, Mike, Shane Sewell's able to get himself psyched up, fired up, and put it in his favor. Crowd getting behind him. Well, they've been behind him. Shortcut that time with the rake of the eyes by the Sheik. Sheen gonna try and take him up, and that's one way. Work on that knee, and then drop down with that back heel trip. Looks to the crowd here, and you know what? I guess what better place than Charlotte, North Carolina, than for Shane Sewell to slap on that figure four leg lock. I'll tell you what, a lot of times that's been seen in the middle of the ring here in this town. 
You know that, and look at him. He's got it applied, and he's sensing it hard, and you can just see the pain in Bashir's face. You can see the pain in Shane Sewell's face as he's applying it as hard as he can, but Bashir able to get his hands on the ropes to break it. And Bashir has been weakened. Let's see if Shane can, oh, out of the, just see that at the last split second, taking Shane up into the air and dropping him down. Hot shot style right across that top rope. Rolls him back over and the Sheik gonna unleash more of that sadistic offense. Big shots to the face, one after the other, and Earl trying to get him to stop. The count's not working. I'll tell you what, though, you mentioned it, that neck just catching that top rope, and it just completely takes your air out. It completely makes it hard for your breathing. All you're concentrating on is trying to get airflow. And but now you see Earl Hebner pushing Bashir. As, as Earl Hebner's trying to get control of this match. And you can see Bashir just takes a while. Oh! Earl Hebner just slapped him across the face. Like, what in the world are you doing? And Bashir chasing referee Earl Hebner around this six-sided ring, and he walks right into that left arm lariat. I'll tell you what, nice little teamwork there between Hebner and Shane Sewell, whether it was intended or not. Shane Sewell sure used it as such. Quick reversal. Sewell shot off. Sunset One, flip roll through. Got it. Yeah! Put the sheet right back in his place. And look at Earl Hebner, and here comes referee Andrew Thomas and Rudy Charles and Slick Johnson. And it's a victory for all of them because of the abuse that he took at the hands of Bashir. The brothers in stripes are out to celebrate. Patting him on the back, and you know that they're loving this situation. Referee Shane Sewell returns to the ring at Genesis and he knocks off Sheik Abdul Bashir. That's payback. And what, how impressive was Shane Sewell? What a game plan he had. I mean, the guy showed he was working. Whoa, 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 hold on. Something's going on with Jim Cornette, Charmel, Booker T. JB's on the scene. Take it, JB. Look, Cornette, Booker doesn't know anything about Rhino, and don't ask him any more questions, because right now, he's focused on his match tonight. Well, you better tell him to unfocus, Charmel, because I need to know what's going on with Rhino, and I need to know sooner than later. Excuse me. Did I tell you just keep my wife in order? You see, Book no one orders my wife around here but me, you see? Booker, don't try to big dog me. I've been around here too long. I need to know what's going on with Rhino. I need to know right stinking now. Oh, hey, 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 Let's go, baby. Come on, Shane. Come on. Come on, Shane. Thank you. The TNA Tag Team Titles. The most desired set of bling in professional wrestling today. Teetering on the brink of extinction for nearly a decade, tag team wrestling has been restored to prominence by TNA through the grit and determination of its most gifted superstars who have brought on a resurgence in the sport. The aerodynamic duo, Consequences Creed and Black Machismo Jay Lethal have defied the odds to capture the gold in unprecedented fashion only days before Genesis. Now, they must defend the titles against the ire of beer money and the monstrous combination of Abyss and Matt Morgan. Will they be able to pull off another upset and justify their claim to the gold? Or will their reign at the top end just as quickly as it began? The TNA World Tag Team Championship is on the line as Black Machismo and Consequences Creed defend the title against Matt Morgan and Abyss and Beer Money Inc. And up next at Genesis here in Charlotte, North Carolina, it is time for title match number two of the evening with the TNA World Tag Team titles on the line. And we're gonna break it down for you with the bullet points. Let's check out the tag lines. This past Thursday on Impact, it was Consequences Creed and Black Machismo, opportunistic when they cashed in Beaster Fire with Matt Morgan and Abyss. Already established as the number one contenders, the decision was made to go with a three-way match. 
have to ask this question, what condition is Robert Roode's knee in? And will it negatively affect beer money? Those are the questions tonight. It's time to answer them and find out who will be established as the top team in early 2009. This is a three-team contest for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing challengers number one first. He stands six feet eight inches tall and weighs 350 pounds. He is the monster. Press! One half of the most physically imposing tag team in TNA, six feet, eight inches tall, 350 pounds. As you heard, bring it out to Dave Penzer mention, and here is his tag team partner, seven foot tall, 300 pounds. His tag team partner from Fairfield, Connecticut, the Blueprint, Matt Morgan! recent weeks we've been talking about the blueprint Matt Morgan possibly or maybe losing a little patience with his partner the monster of this I'll tell you one thing though they've got to feel pretty good right now because last week on impact it looked like this situation might not happen when lethal and consequence three came in and stole those belts they might not have been here tonight Challengers number two are accompanied by Jacqueline, Robert Brood, and Cowboy James Storm, the team of Beer Money Incorporated. Well, when it comes to having those feast or fire cases, the situation involving Robert Brood this past Thursday on Impact, you can see him working in, on his knee at that point up on the ramp. They fell victim to Beer Money Incorporated to one thing, the opportunistic feast or fire turn in by Black Machismo and Consequences Creed. What, the Boozer Cruiser? Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's a good name. I like it. The Boozer Cruiser. I got you, baby. I'll tell you what, though. Talk to Robert Roode beforehand. He said the knee's a little tweaked, but he feels a lot better. He said the thing was he was so scared that it was seriously injured. When he found out it wasn't, it was a slight sprain that just had a lot of severe pain. He feels he can go almost 100% tonight. Ooh, yeah. Team number three are the TNA World Tag Team Champions, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, and Consequences Creed. Was there ever a definition of the old phrase, right place, right time, for the feast or fired winner, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, and his tag team partner, Consequences Creed? I'll tell you what, they had a game plan, and I talked to Lethal about that as well, and he said him and Consequences Creed came every day prepared. If anything happened that they could take advantage of, they would do. And they said when Robert Roode went down on the knee and they realized it really was hurt, they saw it an advantage. I mean, it's getting those titles. That's what Feast or Fire is all about. They came in and took them. And I'll tell you what, they're proud to hold them. And when you look at these young guys, it really is a great potential for a tag team. Think about it, Jay Lethal, Consequences Creed. These guys are just... Their attitudes are what this business is all about. I mean, you can't help but like both of these guys and they just put so much effort into it. They have a chance to become great champions. Beer Money Incorporated, oh, they want those belts back and they want them now. And check this out, Don. Just a couple of feet in front of us here at the broadcast position, you see the blueprint, Matt Morgan, his tag team partner, the Monster Abyss, and just judging by that body language, judging by the reactions between these two, it looks like they've set those differences the friction, any possibility of that aside, is they're on the same page for this three-way tag. Well, if these guys ever do get on that same page that you're talking about, wow, I, I look just out. see them as, as just the most destructible force in, in, in tag team history. I mean, they are that big and powerful. And the athletic ability that both these big guys have, it, it just defies logic, a lot like Hernandez. I mean, they really are, uh, especially Matt Morgan, are just a, a physical specimen. But, you know, you mentioned it. They just got to somehow stay focused on what it is. It's about getting those, those tag team championships tonight.
I know you talked about Robert Roode and and his personal feeling that the that the knee that I think he used the word tweaked. Yes. The knee that he tweaked on impact this Thursday was not going to inhibit him at any point in this match tonight. And, and he felt that he would be able to go in at nearly 100%. I think that's easy to say back in the locker room area, but possibly a different thing when you come out here and you get in a matchup with opposition like Creed and Lethal and, and obviously Big Matt Morgan and Abyss. Well, I mean, you know, these guys, if, if they if they got the game plan, any chance they can take a shot at that knee of Robert Roode, they're going to take it. But at one thing about Robert Rudy feels like it was his fault. He feels, and you know it, he's thought about it. He feels there's a re the reason that they don't have those belts right now is because of him. You know, he's just going to suck up the pain tonight and give it everything he's got, but still look for James Storm to carry a lot of the load. It's first pin or first submission that will determine the victors of the TNA World Tag Team Champions here tonight at Genesis. Storm able to counter and turn it around on Creed. Shot off into the corner, but then he walks right into that boot. Consequences caught him in and check that out. Springs through, decks him with the clothesline, on him for the cover, and even with that far leg hook, that's not enough to put the cowboy away. I mean, you want to know why he does that, comes out of that somersault? Because it just gives him extra force when he charges out of that. And he comes right up into the guys, and he hits him with that, that clothesline with just so much stronger force than just straight on. It really is impressive, but it's all about timing. When he times it right, it's a thing of beauty. Well, this is going to be interesting. You can see that as Rude comes into this matchup now to square off against Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, the guy who won that Feast or Fire case with the tag title shot. Rude was sort of just stretching that leg out, stretching the knee, feeling it, and we'll see how he does at the point of contact. Well, you've just got to make a decision. You, you either go for it and you don't think about it, and, and or, or you take yourself out. You can see what he's feeling. He's going right at it with those knife edge chops. But Jay Lethal, Black Machismo turns it around, and he's got some jabs for Rude. Yeah, big rapid fire jabs and then shot off and out of the turnbuckles, high up into the air. That big backdrop by Black Machismo has Rude begging off. And you see that time, he's able to just poke him right in the eyes, poked him with the fingers in the eyes, tried to toss him out to the floor. That's not the case. Shoulder block from the outside. And here he goes up to the top. Could be that big top rope elbow that he's famous for. I'll tell you, the longer this goes, and he hits him there with that double sledge, and here we go, one, two, not enough. Think about this, though. Matt Morgan Abyss right now watching these guys wear each other down, biding their time, biding their moment. And I'll tell you something, when you're tired, the last thing you want to see is a fresh Abyss coming in. And remember what Abyss said, too, about tonight. He might resort to that old Abyss, that just, that devil may care Abyss, that Abyss that, that will do anything and everything, if you see the penitent by Creed. And that, that I think, is what's needed. He's got to have some kind of a balance. And you've got to, though, you've got to see that destructive Abyss come through, I think, Mike. The pre-therapist. Monster yes, Abyss, yes. I think, is what he was talking about in terms of reverting to his old ways as we see Creed. Wait a minute. Pride of Tennessee, Jacqueline comes in right into the her, her man, Robert Roode. Now they're going to try and double team here and shoot Storm off, and they stacking up all three members of Beer Money, Inc. in the corner. Well, I'll tell you what. She paid the price that way of trying to protect Robert Roode, and now you see Abyss, and look at this. They're going to do a little teamwork as Abyss uses the strength, sends Lethal in, sends Creed in, and now they're saying, come on, Monster, oh. let's just finish it off, and here he comes. And here he does come. Train. And think of everything that Beer Money Incorporated has put Abyss yeah. through in recent months. Oh, perfect landing that time. Just, oh. Well, on any other time, that would be a... Uh, Go right ahead. Keep going. That you, you order hey, hey, hey. In your motel room. What? Fans in oh, Charlotte. That's what I've heard. Fans here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Reacting as we see Abyss clothesline rude right into the steel. I'll tell you, though, that's the force that Abyss can bring you. I mean, there's clotheslines and then there's Abyss clotheslines. Just Robert Roode just went flying out. Creed with the baseball slide, Lethal with the baseball slide. He's in storming. Here they go. Look at that. What a shot. One through the rope to the suicide dive. And Lethal and Creed somersaults over the top rope right on top of Robert Roode. We've been talking from the outset about how important timing is. We're going to take another look, guys, in the truck. I'll come back with my timing story in a second here after we look at this replay. Oh, look at that. Just the thing of beauty by Consequences Creed. And there's that suicide dive. 
right on Storm into the guardrail. And think about it, Matt Morgan now, he's wanting to get himself in the action. Matt Morgan decides he's going to do it with a bang. Look at him. Perched up on top. Look at him. Oh, oh, he gives him the one-gun salute, and then he takes them all out with that big move from the top. Look at this time. He was perfect here by Matt Morgan as he takes all four competitors out in one shot. That's how you turn things in your favor. I'm getting this story in no matter what. Uh-oh. Here he comes, Abyss, into the corner, and Rude caught him that time with the elbow. In terms of timing, the longer that Abyss and Morgan waited and watched, they run the risk of seeing a pin or a submission by the other wrestlers involved in this match. So they really, Don, couldn't wait that long before they come into play. And now, beer money, double team on Abyss. Looked like he was going to go for that big double choke slam, and instead, he gets driven down face first. I'll tell you what, Storm able to catch a hold of the head and put it down as Rude went just a little bit past, and that may have been, been a situation where the knee kind of affected him a little bit, but James Storm was wore more tag team championship belts than anybody in TNA history. If there's anybody that knows what it is to wear one and feel like wearing one and want it back, it's him as he is just going to town on Abyss and the double teamwork right now by Beer Money wow. as they work together to suplex Abyss. It's what you need to do against somebody the size of Abyss, the weight of Abyss, as Beer Money Incorporated, James Storm, Robert Rude, catch him with that big double team suplex and try to Tennessee Jacqueline. She's just loving it as she circles the ringside area. Rude goes for the cover. Not much luck there. I mean, think about this tag team division. Throw the guns in there and LAX in there. And I mean, there's nobody in wrestling that's got tag teams Stop. like TNA does. Are you kidding? Any one of those teams just can can do it all as Abyss shows the speed and there's a clothesline for Root and Abyss still falls down to his knees you can see Matt Morgan cut over here get the tag I want in just dying to get in to this three-way TNA world tag team title matchup at Genesis you see Creed tagged himself in Creed cuts right in front and catches both members of Beer Money springing off the top. He cut right in front of Matt Morgan and Morgan and Abyss having a conversation right here in front of us. Well, Matt Morgan's frustrated, but that was just the consequences. Creed, you can't you know, blame Abyss. No, are you kidding? That was just he saw an opportunity. He knew that he could catch him off guard, and it worked. I mean, they, these guys just they want the action. That's what it's all about. There's a little eye poking going on by James Storm. And you had to give props that time to Creed, but now consequences on the receiving end of the beat down here and the double team move from Beer Money. Storm and Rude shoot him off, take him up, and instead it's Creed coming right back. That's he a double both, Creed he, he did, and pin attempt on Storm, no, just two. I'll tell you what, though, there's going to be a lot of these guys that are going to have to jump in there and break up some of these. I mean, it's a situation where if you don't, you're going to be on the outside looking in. You really have to be paying attention. I know a lot of times you're thinking about what you're going to do next. Oh, man! Wow, that's teamwork. Double up on Creed, and they put him away. No, lethal in. Double sledge to save it. Boy, just at the last second, just before Rudy Charles counted three. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Jay Lethal knew he had to. I mean, there was no chance. Creed was not kicking out of that. Oh, man, they just split his legs. Beer Money, Inc., make a wish with consequences. Creed and, boy, one half of the TNA World Tag Team Champions in their very first title defense. He's in trouble, going to try and fight back from his knees, back up to his feet, and as soon as he does, Storm reels off that right, sets him up in the corner, jacked his jaw that time. I'll tell you something, though. We've just seen the big, gigantic cross-body block. But other than that, Matt Morgan has been pretty quiet in this matchup. He's somebody I think has got to, to just in, inflict his will on these guys right now to show what he has and, and, and the, the advantages that he brings to the table. But right now, he's watching the situation, and you mentioned it. The timing that could happen like right. this, too. Oh, Creed kicks out, but it could have been all over. I mean, it's, a, it's really good for Morgan and Abyss that he is so fresh but not if they're standing on the outside looking in when a pin or a submission takes place. Well, I think maybe that's just a situation where you've not been tag team partners in these kind of matchups and title matchups, you know, before, and it's just one of those things where, you know, you just want to do it by the rules, and you don't realize sometimes, buddy, you better do what you got to do. Because I promise you, Beer Money Inc. will, and we saw last week that, that lethal and consequences Creed aren't, aren't afraid to use do whatever they got to do to win. Back body drop was telegraphed. That hurt Rude. Oh. But instead, when Creed comes off the ropes, 
Wow, Rude takes him up into the lights, powers him down, Spinebuster, no, two only. Spinebuster, he does it as good as anybody. I mean, Robert Rude and, and James Storm, you and I have talked about it. We've, we've heard great, you know, another tag team, of course, that are involved in something else, Team 3D, but they were telling us one time about, they look at these guys and they see greatness. They see them. They see a, a team that, that can do it all just because they, they've got so many gifts and, and this is what makes beer money so great. Check out the Tennessee Cowboy showboating, putting the cowboy hat on and just uh, mocking Black Machismo Jay Lethal with that potential tag. Still got the hat in place. Creed gonna be shot across. Sent him right off into those corner turnbuckles. Storm, tip of the cap to the crowd here in Charlotte. Oh. Caught nothing but turnbuckle on the way in. Oh, that hurt. Man, that hurt. And I'll tell you what, though, they were doing a good job of getting under their skin, and that's what Beer Money does. But Creed able to get out of the way as, as Storm was going for the kill shot. And man, he, he's the one that got killed. Oh, man. You can see Rude once in. You saw on the opposite side, Lethal does as well. Morgan and Abyss, but it makes sense here for Creed to only tag in Lethal if you think about it. Well, absolutely. He knows a fresh Matt Morgan or a fresh Abyss could come in here and get the pin and cost them their title. I mean, that's why you got to stay out there. And you got to give Lethal and, and Creed credit, buddy. They're, they're, they're fighting for to keep these belts as well as anybody. And look at that athleticism by Jay Lethal. And look at him. He's just a whirlwind. Hip toss, cartwheel, drop kick, pin, no! Almost had the three, but instead gave up the pin to enable Storm to crash down on his own partner, Rude. Tell you what, if Abyss and Matt Morgan can't get in there, they're gonna end this thing. I mean, it really is a situation, but again, they've gotta be getting frustrated. There's that backbreaker as he goes for the lethal combination and he does finish it off. Caught him with both parts of the lethal combination and now Jay Lethal heads outside and he says it is time to put him away. Blind tag from outside. Smart move. There go. Blueprint in. Two. Oh, tried I'm... to tried to pick the bones and come right in and get the pin. Smart, smart move by Matt Morgan. Well, he was just looking for any opportunity he could to get in there. And now you see Lethal putting those jabs at Abyss, and Abyss is like, "What in the world are you doing?" Just kind of press slams him up into the lights. Choke slam on the way. Lethal taken up. Oh. And boom, instead driven down. Backbreaker style across the knee. Wow, oh, what a move that is. Whoa, consequences. Creed was up in the air as high as I've seen anybody and brought that drop kick down. Now he rolls up and he catches that carbon footprint from Big Matt Morgan. That thing is deadly. The carbon footprint by the blueprint Matt Morgan takes Consequences Creed completely out of this match. Dropped him out here to the floor. Oh, check out Storm stabbing Morgan in the back. I'll tell you what, that's what you've got to do. You've got to have your partners back, and you've got to know that your partner's going to be there when you need him, and that's what makes Beer Money great. As they're going to try to take Big Matt Morgan up, do they have the strength? I don't think so. Matt Morgan's just not tired enough yet. Look at this. It's one of those, <laughs> yeah, one of those moves that looks good on paper, but not so good on canvas. I'll tell you what, he used those guys against each other that time. That just shows you his strength. But there's the smartness of Rude. He let him come to it, and he put that foot into him, and then just goes right over and put the back of his head to the mat. Here we go. Snapped his neck covers. Two. Play. Got him. No. Uh oh, Beer Money Incorporated. Boy on the front. No, wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? What's he calking for? Oh, he's Champ oh. A championship belt tossed in by Storm. Went right over the head of his partner, Rude. And Abyss takes the title belt. You see Storm just crashes into the table here. Courtesy of Morgan. Oh, oh no. He, he, he knocked out his own partner. Rude ducked. And Abyss thought he had a shot of taking out Rude for good. He just caught his own partner. As you see, Jackie still has the referee to where she, he doesn't see what's going on. Here we go. You Abyss can... gets posted outside. Rude's got the cover. Off the top with that big elbow comes Lethal. And now you see Jay Lethal's perfect timing. He's got it. He's got the pin on Rude. As referee Rudy Charles, if he can get himself back in. Come on, Rudy. Trying to kick Jackie Stay out. Stay focused on the ring, Rudy. Goodness gracious, Jackie doing everything she can. Jacqueline's done it. Did you see that big kick that time? The last call by Storm on Lethal. He drapes the body, the arm of his partner, Rude, across the chest of the pro Morgan. Charles slides in and counts three. Here are your winners and new TNA World Tag Team Champions, Beer Money Incorporated. Jacqueline did her job. She 
did what she was supposed to do, and it worked out to Beer Money's favor as they get those belts back. They certainly do. James Storm, Robert Roode, Beer Money Inc., once again, TNA World Tag Team Champions, and the team of lethal consequences. They lose the title belts in their first defense. Time for Storm and Rude to pop a cold one and celebrate. I'll tell you what, though, if I'm daily going on consequences free, I try to find a positive out of this. I try to find a situation where I can build from this, maybe get a rematch with Beer Money Incorporated. The question we have is what's going to happen with Matt Morgan in a bit. I mean, Matt Morgan is going to realize that it was a bit that hit him in the face with that belt. Blueprint on the receiving end of that championship belt shot to the head. Boy, he's trying to clear the cobwebs. You can see, judging by the reaction, by the look on the face of the monster of this, that he knows that he's screwed up. I'll tell you what, he tries to do the right thing. He really does. It's just a situation where he just had bad luck, it seems. And him and Matt Morgan cannot get on the same page. These guys should be a destructive force, and you can see Matt Morgan kick off. He realizes he's lost the goal tonight, and he's blaming a bit. Yeah, we've talked about how Morgan has been losing patience with Abyss. We saw him get together, Don, right here in front of us prior to this match. Looked like they had put those differences aside. Looked like they were both focused on... Whoa. Well, I'll tell you what, Abyss is one of those. You got to be careful how you yell at him and treat him because exactly. he can snap in a second. I mean, that brain thinks in one direction. And you see Matt Morgan, though, he's just so upset and frustrated. He's just not stopping in his eyes. He's really getting in the face of Abyss. Wait a minute, I'm getting word that Kurt Angle's on the rampage. JB, take it. Look, Kurt, I really think you should calm down a little bit. I mean, you're a little bit out of control right now, okay? Please, a little voice of reason. What the hell are you looking at? How about I slap you around like the Panthers got slapped around yesterday? How about that? He doesn't want to do that. Look at me like that. Kurt, calm down. How was your Christmas? Seriously. Care sure. Sure. Call everybody. I'll call you back. Kurt, where is Rhino? What's going on? You want to know about Rhino or anything else with the main event mafia? You come to me, not the other guys. All right, then tell me what's going on with Rhino. Shouldn't you be more concerned about your fair haired friend, Jeff Jarrett? <sighs> because after I cripple him tonight, and I will, I take over his office, then TNA. Then watch him. Then what? I'm not worried about Jeff Jarrett, because Jeff Jarrett can take care of himself, and I know where he is. He's here in this building. I want to know what's going on with Rhino. You want to know about Rhino? I'll tell you about Rhino, but I don't think you're going to like it. You see, Jim, we went to Rhino's hotel room this morning. We kindly asked him to get into our limousine. He didn't want to come at first, so we kind of had to force him and we just wanted him to know how important the TNA World Heavyweight title was to the main event mafia. So we gave him an offer he couldn't refuse. He refused that offer. So we did what we had to do. We commenced to beating the hell out of him to within an inch of his life. We left him off in a vacant lot. We gave him cab fare because that's the kind of guys we are. So Jim, you better come up with plan B because Rhino ain't coming tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> eventually, but Don, we, we've got to cover this situation involving Rhino, Kurt Angle, taking credit for eliminating the war machine. They forced him into a limo, the main event mafia beat the hell out of him, they dropped him in a vacant lot. Well, they know just what Jim, that What's Jim mean. Cornette going to do? Uh, I don't know what he's going to do, it's a situation where, hey, what do you do, you're handicapped, we're here in Genesis now. Louisiana, the hardcore knockout, Brooksy! 
are trying to solve the situation with Kevin Nash. Scheduled to compete in the six-man tag later tonight to return to the ring of Mick Foley. We find out that Nash has been hospitalized with a staph infection. And now on the heels of that comes word that the war machine Rhino has been eliminated by the main event Mafia. Boy, Jim Cornette, I, I don't know what he's going to do. TNA Knockout Champion, and she joins ODB and the Hardcore Knockout Roxy in this six-person knockout tag match. Yes, it takes the place of the scheduled Christy Hemi Awesome Kong title bout. Eventually, the winner of the fall in this match is going to get a title shot. And their opponent, Satima Aisha Saeed, Raka Khan, and Sojourner Bolt. They are the Comtourage! Now think about this situation, Professor. The newly formed Comtourage of Raka Khan, Sojo there, Sojourner Bolt, Raisha Saeed. One thing about it, you know that they're deep down probably Reset being in Kong shadow a little bit. This is a chance. If one of them gets the pin, they get a shot at awesome Kong. And it's a good opportunity for one of them. And who's gonna know Kong better than her Kong Tourage? The three members of the Kong Tourage circle the ring in anticipation of this knockout tag team match. And boy, it has to be a strange situation for all three members. Sojourner Bolt, Raka Khan, and Raisha Saeed. I mean, Saeed's been with Kong the longest time. You talked about that stepping out of the shadow, and it is quite a shadow that Awesome Kong presents. Boy, it would be an opportunity, Don, to move right to the top and get a title shot and really stake your own claim here in TNA. Check out the new sleek outfit there by Raisha Saeed. I mean, the bodysuit. Keeps everything covered and she can maneuver better. That's a smart move on her part. As she obviously is taking this serious, wants to get the pin and get the title shot. Taylor Wild, somebody, I'll tell you what. There's been one person in TNA that seems to have Kong figured out better than anybody else. It's Taylor Wild. She's been so impressive from the moment she came in. This is a great opportunity for her, but I'll tell you something. Roxy would love nothing better than to get a shot at Kong. ODB would love nothing better than another shot at Kong. No question, Taylor Wilde has seemed to have had the number of Awesome Kong with the backslide with both shoulders down. Taylor tries to put her away. Here she comes off the former champ, snaps it off, catches the Hurricane Rana on Sojourner Bolt. And once again, to remind you, the individual who gets the pin, who gets the submission win in this match, will go on to get a future knockout title shot against the reigning champion, Awesome Kong. And I almost, I, I've got to commend Jim Cornette. He just doesn't hand out title shots to people who aren't deserving. In this case, Don, he's making them earn it tonight here at Genesis. Well, it's a good situation. You see the nice forearm there by Roxy. And I got to tell you, Mike, as I think about it, I'm intrigued about the fact that if Raka Khan gets the pin here tonight. Think about that. Raka Khan face to face with Awesome Kong, two of the most intimidating women we've ever seen. There's so many opportunities. And Raisa Saeed's another one. Somebody who's been st stood by Kong for so long, you know she would like an opportunity to show what she's made of. But right now, Roxy's got her in a bad predicament right there. Just pulling on her from every direction. Submission hold applied by the hardcore knockout, Roxy, and then she just drops Saeed down and then rolls on top for a pin. I'll tell you, I'd like to get Sting's thoughts on this situation with what's going on with the War Machine Rhino. I mean, he's somebody that, that kind of keeps himself a little reserved when it comes to the, the main event mafia. I mean, he's there for the respect reasons. He's there for, for so many other ways. But I'll tell you what, I just, I, I tell you what I really think it is. And, 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 and I, I, got, I just got to say this. I think they know that Rhino, after he's done it before, they can't take the chance that Rhino takes that goal from him. They know that, that anybody's one gore away from losing that belt and, and Rhino has just been so focused on the front line that they weren't going to take any chances and obviously they're probably keeping Sting out of it but I'll tell you what what Kurt Angle and the main event Mafia did I, I it's just a, a night like this with Jarrett and Angle the rematch and Mick Foley's return to the ring 
and then to have them do this to the War Machine, it's just been unreal. It's really nothing less than we can expect, however, from the main event Mafia. You look back at that hit list that they've assembled over the course of the past month or two. It started really with Christian Cage, went on to Petey Williams, Brother Ray of Team 3D. Remember what they did to Samoa Joe, oh. sidelining him. And then on Impact recently, the annihilation of Jeff Jarrett's longtime close friend, BG James. Oh, man, what a bad landing that was for Taylor Wilde. You heard that, Don. Right, right here. Just a couple of feet in front of us. Right on the concrete right in front of us. And she's getting a beat down right now as referee Andrew Thomas is distracted. A little bit of what's going on. And Taylor Wilde is just getting the crap kicked out of her by, by Raisa Saeed. And, and so Jenner, whoa, whoa, what a shot into the rail. Holy cow! Guardrail. That's force there, buddy. You see that guardrail just fold up at the impact of the double team move of Taylor being shot off into the steel. We're gonna roll her in. She's she's been beaten, like you said, had the crap beat out One, of her. Roll two. in and con no. Raka Khan. Somebody that that would love, I think, deep down, would love a shot at Austin Kong to try to test herself against her. But wouldn't it be interesting if Raisha Saeed ended up with the title shot against Kong? Right now, Taylor Wilde just wants to get someone else tagged in. I mean, she wants to catch her breath and, and, and find another chance to make her way back in, but they're not letting her. Scoop and a slam by Raisha Saeed as she comes off the ropes, and man just brings that elbow down in a, in a straight arc as you saw one, two. Taylor Wilde gets the shoulder up in time. And Saeed can sense now that she has Taylor severely weakened, especially after that big shot into the guardrail. Gonna try and rifle off an offense here. Taylor fights back, and Taylor slides through the legs she of caught Saeed, but Raish has got her hooked by the ankle. Oh, I tell you what, I thought I saw a tag. Andrew Thomas didn't see it and not allow it. So right now, Taylor Wilder, you see the surfboard. Oh, man, then just puts that foot right in the middle of the back and slams it down. Gonna cross the legs here. Oh, and another surfboard move and another stomp to the back. But Taylor just on the point here where she is just been beaten to death by the Conqueror. Sojo, Sojourner both goes off from the top rope and drops the elbow across the back One, of the head. Two, does she get a shot? No, she doesn't. I'll tell you what, Taylor Wilde, we know how much heart she's got. We know how tough of a chick she is. But I'll tell you, she's just getting the three-on-one treatment right now. And not in a good way, as you see Stojo just cranking on that chin. As the crowd yelling for ODB, yelling for Roxy, but the, that's not the problem. The problem is Taylor can't get to him. Trying to get back up to that vertical base. And then try and unleash an offense, and then try and get one of her partners into the match. Off the rope, Sojo misses with the clothesline, and then grabs her and powers her right down. Again, Taylor Wilde finds herself on her back, on the mat, and she's looking around, trying to figure out where ODB and Roxy is. Sojourner Bold also, she looks like she's getting to her feet first. As she's going over, no, she needs to make a tag. She's in no shape to stay out there. And Raisha Saeed comes in, but here's ODB. And ODB goes right after Raka Khan before she hits the clothesline on Raisha Saeed. Almost like it's a pent-up frustration that we're seeing from ODB unleashing the attack, unleashing the offense. Scoop, slam, down goes Saeed. Sojourner Bolt taken up, and she's powered down by ODB. ODB is just so unique, so different than any other TNA knockout, any other woman you ever met. There's a double clothesline action, and she's just fired up. Here comes Raka Khan, and she just got the boot and just scoops her up. Oh, but you can see how Raka was able to use that height and, and bring it back to her advantage. Fighting off ODB, and ODB says we'll go back to the well a second time. And there you see the fall away slam on Raka Khan. And look at ODB right up to her feet. That can't be an easy task to do that to the six foot one, six foot two, whatever she is. Keep Raka, going. Six three, six four. You're getting close. <laughs> Here she goes, runs right into the power slam. Here we go. One, two. Sojourner Bolt at the last split Just second breaks her. it up. Clipped her going by. I was with you. I thought that running power slam would probably be enough to give ODB the title shot. But she saw the save by Sojourner Bolt. Now it's broken down with all the knockouts involved. Well, you see the, 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 the 
The TNA hardcore knockout Roxy just going after her. She wants to get a piece of the action as she's been sitting over there getting frustrated. Oh, and you can see as she's trying to hold both Rock and Khan and Sundrun her ball and just feeds them to Taylor Wilde. Feeds them. She takes a shot herself. But Taylor Wilde able to take the mountain. Rock Khan and Sojourner Bowl got the brunt of it. At the same time, Saeed in the ring is pounding on ODB. Here's the quick roll up. Here's the small package. Did she get it? She did. Here are your winners Taylor Wilde, Roxy, and ODB. And in the process, ODB with the victory. You can see her partners. Roxy and Taylor Wilde raising their hands. I was just going to say, she's now in line for a title shot against the TNA Knockout Champion, Awesome Kong. And here comes the champ with belt in hand. Well, she wants to make sure she gets the intimidation factor out there right away. She wants ODB to be thinking about what she's won here. She's won a chance to meet her for knockout gold. Remember, Awesome Kong has beat her in the past, and Awesome Kong wants to remind her of that and let her know that, hey, I am still the champion, and it always goes through me. Here's the showdown. Here's the face-off. She's got an upcoming, a future TNA knockout title shot. ODB earned that. And she's trying to get in the head of Awesome Kong. Oh, you see Awesome Kong just in doing what she can to intimidate her. ODB can't be intimidated. I don't think she understands. She can be intimidating. She just can't be intimidated. And you did, could... did you read her lips? She said, right now. I want my title shot right now. Well, I'll tell you what, not a smart idea after you've gone through the Kong Taraj. Wait till the timing's right. Give yourself a chance to prepare. And you can see how they meet in the middle. And this isn't the time for it. As it's just broken down into one big melee. Knockouts all over the ring. You can ring the bell all you want. It's not going to stop them. Taylor Wilde trying to fight back, trying to beat down, but... I mean, the Kong Tourage is just too much. And you can see Awesome Kong just screaming there at ODB. They're just looking at her and trying to intimidate her and letting her know that you're going to be in that position a lot, is what she's trying to say. If you face me, as we're still trying to get control of this situation. Holy cow. Whoa. I mean, right here in front of us, there's just a fight going on. And it really boils down at this point to Kong and ODB. And Kong takes ODB up and just choke slammed her. Well, that'll send a message as much as anything. This is what you deal with when you deal with Awesome Kong. And lately, she's just been as dominating as ever. You said you wanted to find out what Sting thought about the Rhino situation? Stay tuned. Here it comes. JB with Jim Cornette and the Icon. I just, I just, I'm trying to reconcile this logic in my head, Sting. Maybe you can explain it to me. Maybe you can help. How can you put up with, how can you condone something like this? You're all about honor and respect. I've known you for 20 years. Well, how honorable is it? How respectful is it to have your goons take a guy out in a parking lot the day of the big title match and rough him up? How can you condone something like that? Who said I condoned it, Jimmy? Who said that I condoned it? Who said that I had anything to do with it, Jimmy? Tell me. All I know is I haven't been to Charlotte for 15 years and I came here tonight to wrestle for the world title. Whether or not Rhino makes it to the ring or not is neither here nor there to me because I came here to win and that's what I'm going to do whether he gets there or not. A little over two years ago, I signed a deal with TNA, and ever since, Jeff, we butted heads. Back then, you were on your way out, and I was on my way up. I came to realize that you were jealous of my success. You dodged me every step of the way, so you would never have to get in the ring with me. You don't want any part of the pain that has pierced my body. You want to coax me back into the ring, Kurt? I'm going to grant you your wish. Jeff Jarrett comes out of retirement at Bound for Glory and screws me out of winning my match against him. I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back and watch you tear down something that I built. In final resolution, you beat Rhino, you get your match with the king of the mountain. If Rhino beats you, you're gone from TNA for good. Here it comes. Superplex. Rolls across, drapes the arm. God, was that close. And now Al Snow comes down, distracts Mick Foley, and Kurt Angle gets the rematch with Jeff Jarrett. What happened at final resolution happened. Kurt got one over on us. Jeff, you tried to kill my career here in TNA. From this point forward, I'm solely 
the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, the wrestler. And Genesis, when I'm through with you, Jeff Jarrett, I'm gonna own you! I can't afford to lose to Kurt. This isn't just about wrestling anymore. If you're gonna try to take down my company, my career, and my family, there's only one way you're gonna do it, and that's over my dead body. Jeff, I am gonna hurt you. I am gonna tear you apart. Kurt! All I can think about is beating the out of you. I'm gonna do everything I can do to bring you down. Your whole world, as you know it, will come to an end. To an end. The Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle prepares for war against the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett, in a grudge match. that he was going to have to prepare for war against Angle. That's exactly what he's done. Jarrett comes out of the blocks on absolute fire. Sleeper hold attempt by Angle, countered with the low blow. And the ring announcer, Dave Penzer, mentioned no disqualification match. Those rules apply here. Both sides agreed. Both Angle and Jarrett said that's the way that we're going to decide this. It has to be that way, Mike. And TNA management rubber stamped it. They said, turn both of these guys loose you're right that's the way this has to be the clothesline by jarrett shoots him all the way up to the wait a minute there's the war machine as you see him just throwing stuff he's here obviously in pain but rhino has made it to the building we'll give you more on that when we when we get it and boy look at look at rhino his clothes Horn, obviously, on that receiving end of the beating from the main event mafia. They left him out in the vacant lot here in Charlotte, North Carolina. But Rhino has arrived here at Genesis, and Jeff Jarrett just takes angle, and there he goes right into the guardrail. I'm going to tell you something. Jeff Jarrett has totally dictated how this matchup was going to be. You know what? When you when you put a man's family uh, online, that's what can happen. That's the kind of situation it's going to be. Look at this. Jeff Jarrett sends him right into the guardrail over here, and now, oh man, look at this. 
Jarrett takes that 24 ounce beer from one of the fans at ringside and throws it right in Angle's face. Just anything that he can do, every little thing that he can do to take advantage of the situation, humiliate Kurt Angle. And look at Jeff, now as he's just thrown beer on him and done everything that he could. Tell you what, oh man, Kurt Angle caught him and sent him right into that guardrail. Sent him with an unbelievable force. Unbelievable force. Bad, bad landing for Jarrett out on the steel here. Boy, Angle, all of a sudden, that explosive move firing back, and that one caught Jeff completely unaware, and Angle rolls out, and yes, no disqualification here in this return match from Bound for Glory, and Kurt's right on him. Full court press, there goes Jeff. Oh, man, did you see that? Right into the side of the steel steps went Jarrett. Well, that's what Kurt Angle can do. He knows how to turn it around, and he's ruthless, and that's how it is. Just wicked impact shots. As you can see, he throws him back into the ring again. And this crowd is just feeling it. They know that they're witnessing something just unbelievable. Two people that hate each other more than two people can even imagine. Oh! Off that quick snap, off that quick suplex angle on him for the cover. You're right, competitors as well as fans here at Genesis in Charlotte, North Carolina at an absolute fever pitch for this match. And Look at Angle with those stomps. Look at the boots right one after the other into the head and into the face of the King of the Mountain, the founder of TNA. I mean, you can just feel the hatred and you feel that in every kick to the head, every smashing of the face of the steps, the backbreaker. I mean, everything has had an extra force to it. It's been unreal. Already from the start, it's been unreal. As Kurt Angle's turned this thing around into his favor after Jeff Jarrett started off like we've never seen him. And how about Angle? With almost every impactful offensive move, he's right on top of Jarrett with the pin attempt. And now gonna try and ground him and try and wear him down. And Jarrett's gonna try and feed off this crowd. Maybe get that adrenaline rolling one more time. He had that huge burst right at the start of the match. And now he's gotta get that rechanneled. Well, Kurt Angle, the look how his look at his form. That's what uh, that's what being an Olympic wrestler does. He knows where to get his legs, his knees. He knows how to get that base as strong as it can. It's so hard for Jeff to get to his feet. Jeff spinning around, does trying to fight for a shot, trying to find any kind of an opening, and it looks like he finally has. But Kurt just lets him do it because he goes right after him. But Jerry gets the boot up, Mike. Just as he came in, Jeff was able to get that boot up. But then as he comes back out of the corner, Angle is there, waiting, prepared and unleashes the belly to belly. He released him high overhead, and you can see Jarrett favoring the back of his head and his neck. Well, he hit hard. I mean, he hit that head hard. Now, Kurt, one, two, Jeff able to get the legs up and use it to force himself shoulder blades up off the mat. Angle using the hair of Jarrett to bring him back up like a handle. And as soon as he gets him up to his feet, that big uppercut. That forearm shot takes him and snaps Jarrett right back down to the mat. And you see the contact that Jarrett made with the canvas, the back of his head crashing down again. And Angle continues to neutralize. I'll tell you what, every punch is just a little harder than normal. Every every kick, every uppercut, everything that you do when you force them into the rail is just a little bit harder than normal because you just you want to make sure that you're getting your message. These two guys just trying to, to let the other one know, let it hurt the other one as bad as they can anytime they can. Right now, Kurt, real methodical all of a sudden. Got that sleeper hold in, just holding it in tight on him, pulling on, the, on those elbows around that neck so he's trying to take away his breath. But Jeff, he's just willing himself to his feet. You can see that Jarrett can feel it at this point. Playing off the crowd, back up to his feet, but then Angle cuts him off, stops him. Gonna try to go for the slam. Instead, Jarrett's prepared. The perfect counter to the Angle slam is that deep arm drag. I'll tell you what, he just let the momentum carry himself forward. And here it go. Wow, what wow. a shot! And he just sent Kurt Angle all the way over the ropes. Unbelievable move as he let the gravity take over. And he sent him high, and Kurt Angle landed hard. I don't know that high does it justice. Look at this all the way down to the concrete. And we come back live with Jarrett. Oh, Jarrett over the top! And he just crashed right down, and I think their heads collided. I'll tell you what, Jeff Jarrett caught, and it's just what happens. He back foot caught the top of that rope, and he hung there, and he was landing back down. We gotta show you this, and you'll see what I mean. Here he goes over. Oh, but he takes the shot, both of them catch their heads. Well, they sure did, and you can see that Jarrett reached out with his hand and caught Angle on the way down. 
Oh, look at this. Look out. Here comes wow. Jared right here by the broadcast table. My God. Just going right over the top. Knocked him down. Just the momentum. It's Jeff Jarrett knocked down. Right here as they're trying to get control. This matchup has just been so intense. I can't believe it. And Angle goes over to the timekeeper and picks up the bell. And he's just ripping the bell apart. Look out. He's waiting for Jarrett to get to his feet. And the second that he does, Angle. No! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And it was right in front of us, the blood. Good. It's just My boring. God, look at the blood come out of the head of Jeff Jarrett. I can't get over the impact of that shot with the timekeeper's bell. Unbelievable, Kurt Angle not stopping at anything. And another shot to the head. You can just stop, just the intensity is off the charts. Right here in front of us, slams his head on the table. My God, he's like a maniac. He's, he's an like animal. a man possessed. Don, there's blood all over us here at the broadcast table. Those shots to the bloody face, to the bloodied head of Jarrett. Oh, my God. Kurt Angle, this thing, I'm telling you what, you couldn't. Words can't describe what we're seeing here. The viciousness that's just in play is unbelievable. And Jarrett with a desperation move up the ramp, Don. And I think Jeff may have momentarily turned this thing around. I'll tell you what, Jeff, though, is he's hurt bad. He's hurt so bad. We saw the, the shot all over the over the desk, and we saw that shot by the bell. I mean, he's just hurt so bad. But he's got to do something, anything out of desperation to turn it around. And I mean, think of this, Don. The longer this match goes, and the more that that blood just flows like a faucet oh. from the head, from the head of Jarrett. You know he's going to be weakened. Is his angle opened up? I, it might be blood from Jeff. I'm can't not see. sure. I can't see, but it wouldn't surprise me. And you see, and you see that Kurt Angle is. I think he is cut on the head. Is Jeff Jarrett able to turn things around here? It's unbelievable. After everything he's taken. That's what determination will do. That's what this company means to him. It means everything to him, Mike. The founder of TNA, fighting for his life, fighting for the future of this company in what has boiled down to the most personal war we've ever seen. And look at Jarrett rock him that time. Caught him with that right hand. He reels away. And then with Angle, whoa, 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 whoa right off the edge of the stage there. Jeff caught him with a right hand and Angle able to catch himself. Jared drives another shot in. Uh, he knows he's got him in an unbelievable predicament. Just trying to get him to teeter off. But Kurt, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. Oh. You see both Angle and Jarrett, they're down. Guys, in the truck, please, let's take another look. Check this out. Oh, man, they went, oh, my God. It, here's another shot of it. And I'm telling you, they went almost, almost too far from the table. And Jeff Jarrett went straight onto the concrete. You're right. With every angle that we look at it. They went through the pyro board. Right through the pyro board. And look at that bloody mess that's Jeff Jarrett's head. With every replay that we saw, it looked worse, didn't it? In terms of the landing, in terms of the contact with both the table, the concrete, and, and even the pyro display that you mentioned. I'm telling you what, both these guys are feeling it. They're, neither one of these guys are going to be able to walk again. I mean, this is, this is life or death. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. As you see Kurt crawling on his hands and knees, trying to get back to the ring. Jeff Jarrett trying to get on his knees. Oh, the pain. They're, they're, there's got to be broken bones, broken ribs, concussions. This thing is just brutal. Will Jeff Jarrett be able to recover from this beating by Kurt Angle, from that slam through the table and onto the concrete? Jarrett is back up and trying to make it. He's trying to crawl towards the ring area. Angle as well. You talked about the hands and knees. And now here comes Jarrett back. That's just sheer willpower. The body right now has given up on him, and they're just forcing it to do things it's not supposed to do. And that's move 
I mean, this has just been unreal. Look at Kurt as he's trying to get himself into the ring. It's kind of a, a pride matter, being able to make it back first. Jeff, though, collapses again on the concrete floor. Jarrett doing everything within his power to fight through the pain. You see on several occasions, Jeff favoring his side, favoring his hip, and Jarrett fighting through the pain to get back towards the ring. Angle slowly on the far side, Don. I think you can see Angle slowly making his way up to the apron. I don't know if Jeff's gonna be able to continue here. Uh, I just don't know. You wonder what's going through their minds right now, if you could read them. It's just that they've gotta be trying to block out pain at the same time, try to stay focused on just killing your opponent. I mean, it's just been that vicious as both of them make it into the ring. Holy cow, I've never seen, look at that. Look at that look of determination on oh, the King of the Mountain's it's, face. It's, it's a look of determination, and it's also one of those situations where you could say if looks could kill. Oh my gosh. Kurt Angle looks like he's gonna get to his feet. Jeff struggling, wobbly. He gets to his feet and he just meets a shot from the fist of Kurt. What a return though by Jeff. Boy, I'm just amazed that Jarrett could even get back up to his feet. Receiving blow that time. But for every shot that he takes, look at Jarrett answer with one of his own. Kurt Angle, did look at Jeff, use the ropes to give him momentum back. Kurt does the same thing. Both of these guys, they look at this, and Jeff Jarrett breaking him, breaking him, breaking him, and Kurt able to stop it. Caught him with the kick, and then Jarrett answers back. Clothesline, running clothesline, takes him down. Olympic gold medalist just drilled three times. Doubled over with the boot. Jarrett, double under, hook, gonna try. Oh, plants him. DDT, roll him, cover One, him. Two, oh my God, Kurt got his shoulder up out of sheer willpower. Oh my God, folks, you're witnessing something special. And I mean, it's for the wrong reasons, two people that hate each other so much that it's come to this. But as far as being a fan of this sport, you're witnessing something special tonight. Two people that will do anything, everything to win this match. Here it match. is, could the stroke put him away? Oh, he no. went for it, instead, Angle counters with of all things, the ankle lock. And right now, you know it's hurting twice as much. There's already so much pain. As you see him cinched in and he's on his feet. And Jeff Jarrett screaming in pain, rubbing his hands through the blood, trying to find a way to get out of it. That picture tells the entire story as Jarrett tries now, senses that his one move here is to get the ring ropes. And when he does, Kurt Angle draws him back, brings him back out to the center. And how about the reaction from Angle that time? I'll tell you, he just let him get so close to the ropes. He knows how it is. And oh, Jeff able to roll through. I don't know where he found the strength to do that, Mike, but he rolled through and sent Kurt Angle outside the ring, but it cost him, and Kurt's on his feet. I'm telling you, Kurt is getting himself even more psyched up. Look Here out. he comes back. Oh my God, the guy just pushes the timekeeper out of the way and picks up the steel chair to come back inside the ring. Look out, Jeff, look out, Jeff. No disqualification, nice drop kick. He drop kicked the chair right to his face. And now, Jared again, Stroh, oh, on him with it. He brought it right on his head, here it is, he's done it. Oh my God, Kurt Angle got the shoulder up. Amazingly, Angle able to get that shoulder before the three count. I mean, Jared hit his move, Jared hit his stroke, but it wasn't enough. I'll tell you, that's just something that, that's just never say die attitude that both these guys got. You, like I said, you're gonna have to kill him to beat him. Both these guys have that same mindset as Jeff puts Kurt up on the ropes, knowing if he can bring him down from up there, he has a chance to end this thing and prove a point, beat Kurt Angle twice in a row. Gonna go for the superplex. Jarrett's got Angle up top. Angle fighting it off. Shots into the rib cage, one after the other. And he's able to push Jarrett all the way back down. And when you think of what that body's already gone through, just think of those bones jarring again. When he hits, but Jeff gets to his feet, and then he catches the drop kick. A glancing blow, though, as he's able to get up and look at this. Angle slam. There it is. He hit it. Oh, here it is. One, two. Jeff Jarrett somehow gets the shoulder up in time. Not one shoulder. Both shoulders up to make sure that there's no doubt that you're not going to get the three count.
a dazed angle. Tries to regroup as well. He just hit the angle slam, but it wasn't enough. Jarrett with the stroke. Both men with their patented finishing moves, and now the straps come down. Oh, this is his opportunity that he has right now where he's just trying. Oh, Jeff Jarrett able to kick him away. Jarrett up in the corner. Angle charges in, and he went shoulder first into the corner. You heard the gasp from the crowd here at ringside as everybody saw Angle go in shoulder first. I'll tell you what, he went with such forces. Jeff Jarrett, look at this. He's got the guitar in hand. He knows the Kurt Angle hit himself so hard into that steel ring post. One shot with the guitar, and he'll get that measure of revenge. He's hit him before, but I promise you there'll be extra force on this one. Here it is. Oh, just when he went for it, you see that low blow, that kick between the legs by Angle. I'll tell you what, Jeff Jarrett wound up, and the fact that he wanted to hit him so hard is what cost him there and allowed Kurt Angle to hit the low blow. And now Kurt looking at that guitar, and you know he's thought about putting that through Jeff's head a million times. Angle has Jarrett's guitar. Jeff, slow, slow to recover. And instead, Angle goes over and, and picks up the steel jack, almost as if he's weighing his options here. Well, he, well you got to figure which one is it going to cause more damage. He holds the guitar up, the crowd responds. He holds the chair up, the crowd responds, and he wants to steal this. Saw the one gun salute, gives him the finger, and he wants to finish him off with his own weapon. My God, what a shot to the head. That's it. Oh, what? Oh, you've oh, got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. A steel chair shot like that to the head. I, I think it's a situation where you've just dealt with so much pain. Somehow you're able to block it out. I mean, it just means that much to Jeff. Trying to get the guitar to go. Oh, and he misses it. Now Kurt's got that angle lock again. There it is. Ankle lock applied. Jarrett fighting through the pain again. Is he going to be able to hang on here? Is he going to be able to get to the ropes to get a break? Those screams are even making it through the crowd. That's the pain that he's in. And he's going to tap. He's got that hand up. How can he not tap? How much more can you ask anybody to take? Either one of these guys. As Kurt Angle is absolutely ripping that ankle apart. He's pulling that ankle off of the leg. Oh, man, you can just feel it here as he cinches it in. Ankle lock applied. Is Jarrett going to pass out from the pain? Is Jarrett going to tap out? The leg's got to be numb. He's got to have no feeling in it at this point. Just the feeling of a shooting pain down his body. Look at that look in his face. Trying to find the willpower somehow to keep from tapping. How do you do it at this point? What's he going to do? Back up to a leg. He rolls through. Wait, Ten, two, no. no. God. Oh, so close. So close to Jeff Jarrett getting the pin. I Look just, at him stalk him. Look at Angle stalk him. I just don't think he had the strength. Oh, now Kurtz pulled him up. Oh, but Jeff Jarrett turned it into a DDT. I think he was going to go for the Angle slam. And in mid-move, Jarrett dropped him. And look at Jeff fire up. Oh, he wants to nail him with that guitar. That, that signature trademark of his. He wants Kurt to, that's the last thing for Kurt to see before it's lights out. Oh, it's already busted. That's all right, Jeff can find some part of it to use. Nah, he says the heck with that as he hobbles over and he grabs the steel chair. The steel chair that Angle used just minutes ago to inflict for, for further damage. Angle doesn't know that Jarrett's got the chair in his hands. And as soon as he gets up, you know that Jarrett wants to hit this out of the park. Oh, a shot to the head. If Jeff Jarrett can cover him, this is over. That just creamed his face, but look at Jeff. He's holding on to that ankle. The pain is unreal. The ankle might even be broken for all we know. We have no idea. We have no idea what he's even walking on. Jarrett slowly crawling back. Angle knocked out. 
Is Jeff going to try and go for the pin? He's going to lean back on it. Here One, it is. Two. Oh, man, it took him too long quick, to get Throw the quick reverse on it. What a match we have witnessed. The return match from Bound for Glory. Jeff Jarrett, victorious, back in the month of October. And Kurt Angle has even the score tonight here at Genesis. I don't know what to say. We, Don, we've said it all. What we have just witnessed here, and if you think about the future here of TNA and what's at stake in this match, this is huge for the main event mafia to get this win. You think about what these guys went through and, and what they put their bodies through. I know somebody had to lose, but you just, you just hoped it would be the other way. And Kurt Angle able to get his revenge tonight. I mean, he practically broke his ankle in that ankle lock, Mike. You oh see, no, come on. Security, trainers in to check on that ankle. Come on, Kurt. Kurt, enough is enough here. And referee Slick Johnson intimidated. I mean, security as well. That's Angle with that chair, and he, we know he's nuts. Well, these guys can't take a chance to stay in there. They're not trained. They know that Kurt Angle will hit oh, him and he second. spits right on. Wow. Come Look on. Stomping the ankle. Just stomping it. Just going right after. Just after everything they've gone through. Come on, take your victory and leave. But he's not. Angle has snapped again. The shots to the head of Jarrett, and now the, oh, the no. ankle, which has obviously already been injured severely. And Angle, oh, come on, he's got it. He's got his leg, he's got his ankle. It's just sandwiched in that steel chair, and he's just stomping on it. He's crushing it right through the chair. Somebody get this animal out of here. He's proved his point, it's over. You've won tonight. It's not enough. That win was not enough for Kurt Angle. What a war. I don't know any other way to describe it. A brutal, vicious, bloody war. How bad is Jeff Jarrett hurt, Mike? Now, very serious situation here with the trainer attending to the leg of Jeff Jarrett. I mean, the last thing you want to do here, Don, is to move Jeff too quickly and risk further injury. You know, we're talking now about the ankle and after seeing what Kurt did to that ankle, but think about the other injuries that we saw going through the, the pyro table onto the concrete. I mean, the, the steel rails, the steel steps, the, the announce table, the, anything that you could be hit with, this guy's gone through tonight. You can see that Trainers and EMTs coming from the back, bringing the stretcher to the ring. All right, let's regroup here. We'll stay on top of this. I believe JB's with Jim Cornette and Rhino. Look, just think about what you're doing. Listen to me. This is stupid. Your back's out. Your head's busted wide open. You don't, you don't need to do this. We can do it another time. We can come up with something else. Rhino, listen to me, please. I'm going to that ring. And if you think you can stop me, then you better try and do it right now. And if not, don't get in my way. Brother, do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live here at Genesis in Charlotte, North Carolina. The founder of TNA, Jeff Jarrett, being stretchered from the ring. Very serious situation here, Don. We're watching it on the monitors right now just to, to see if there's any signs we can see. Jeff, just what an effort tonight. And I know Rhino here getting ready to come out and not gonna be stopped by anything, but just I still, somebody that we've become friends with. This is a personal friend of ours who's, who we've worked with from day one, Mike. It's hard to watch this.
the most personal, the most emotional rivalry that we've ever had here in TNA goes to goes to, to, to Kurt Angle and guys in the truck before we show that replay. The blood that's on this towel, the blood of Jeff Jarrett was not enough for Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle just crossed the line here tonight. Okay, show the replay package. Look at that ending that you feel, the thud every time the boot hits the chair. It's just a sickening thing. It's to, to sit here and try to even watch it, it and watch it again after everything that he went through for Kurt. He couldn't, the victory wasn't enough for him. It wasn't enough. Main Event Mafia has struck again. On the heels of the beatings that we have seen of all the TNA Frontline members, Jeff Jarrett, the latest to be added to that list. Do you think I haven't fought the same fight you're trying to fight? Do you think I haven't been through wars? You have a choice to stand up and be men. And if you are willing to go out there and fight with me, damn it, I'll fight to the end. I'll fight with each and every single one of you. We knew from the very beginning that this was going to be a war. A war is what you want. A war is what you got. When you're a soldier, you want to be on that front line. Because when you fight for something you believe in, you will do anything to succeed. I never had anything against you, Rhino, until you sided with them. Sting, we never had a problem until you decided to join the main event mafia. You, Sting, should be standing next to my side, fighting our fight, the front line's fight, the people's fight. It's all still about respect and dignity, Rhino. And it's what I swore I would get, no matter how much blood was shed, even if it was my own. Sting, you will realize you made the wrong choice when I'm kicking the living crap out of you in that ring. I'm not just gonna beat you. I will rip you in half with a gore. Come to an end at Genesis. It will be showtime. The War Machine Rhino battles the icon Sting for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. The second leg of our triple main event at Genesis is up next. It's the TNA World Heavyweight Championship match. Yes, that TNA World title on the line. Here's the tale of the tape as we break it down for you. In anticipation of this world title match. And you see the figures. The advantage in terms of size and weight goes to the War Machine Rhino. And here's the bullet points. Recently on impact, Rhino with the gore and the pin on Sting. It opened the eyes of TNA management, certainly his confidence level up when the War Machine upset the icon and cemented his position as the top contender for the heavyweight championship. And now what we have to address tonight is how will the assault, the assault by Kurt Angle, the main event mafia on Rhino earlier, affect his chances with so much at stake for both of these factions. We're headed to the ring, our broadcast colleague JB with the introductions of the world title match. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, introducing the combatants in our second of three main events of the evening. First of all, introducing the challenger. Gore, gore, gore. From Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 262 pounds, he is the number one contender for the heavyweight championship of the world. Talk about all the pre-match game plans and strategies that you want, Don, but they've all been taken out of play here. They've all been thrown out of the window because of the attack earlier today by the main event mafia. And you can see right there, the war machine Rhino, the challenger, severely weakened for this championship match. 
You see Sting walking to the ring, and you want to hope to yourself that he had nothing to do with the beatdown on Rhino. You just hope that he wasn't involved. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Venice Beach, California, he is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, the icon, Sting! The world heavyweight champion can deny involvement in the brutal assault on Rhino all he wants. But I've got to tell you, for somebody who for the past several months has been talking about respect and the lack thereof, as we see a bloodied Rhino, the challenger waiting, Sting's not afraid to take advantage of this. And here we go, you can see Rhino right on him. Well, just like the last match, the emotion is so high here. As far as Rhino's concerned, it's the main event mafia, and Sting's a big part of that. And now he just wants to tear into him, but you gotta wonder the questions, Mike. What does he have in the tank? How badly was he beaten, and, and how long can Rhino go? I mean, he's going on, on fumes here, you know that. He's going on that issue of gaining revenge for being severely beaten earlier. His head bandage, the blood flowing down his face, and he is right on Sting, and as Sting rolls out, here comes Rhino right back on him again. I'll tell you something, you can see him always going to the lower back. He's always putting that hand to the lower back. Obviously, that back in severe pain as well, as you can see again. It's just a natural motion. He's not even thinking about it. The back pain that Rhino's feeling, he was honestly just beat down. They never thought he could even make it. But that guy, that's what this title meant to him. He was going to make it come hell or high water, and here he is. And one would presume that Rhino wants to get this over as quick as possible, considering the shape, considering the condition that he's in. And Sting able to sidestep him, and you saw Rhino leave his feet right there and ended up going shoulder first right into that guardrail, and then Sting right back on him, and then Sting sends him into the steel. Man, you, you called it, Mike. He wants to hit one gore quick. He wants to hit one unbelievable forceful move that takes Sting out. He knows he, he doesn't have much. He can't go on. But right now, Sting turned it around and then just puts his head right into the guardrail. Sting measures and drills him right between the eyes with the big right hand. Going to take him over here by the broadcast table. A broadcast table that's been covered in Jeff Jarrett's life. Oh, man! The bloodied head of Rhino goes right into the championship belt and the bandages went flying. I'll tell you what, Sting in a situation here in Charlotte where he finds himself with a lot of fans being in a place where well, he almost considers it a hometown. And I mean, it's the crowd always going to be behind him here, so Rhino's got to contend with that as well. Here he is coming off of that unbelievable beat down at the hands of the main event mafia. And then this, but that's not what Rhino's thinking about. He's just thinking about revenge. Rhino going to position himself now in the middle row. Oh. oh, wow. And Sting just forcibly shoves Rhino all the way from the top. Did you see the way that he made contact with that floor? And you just, you just know that the body of Rhino can't take much more. I mean, he's got to find a way to do this quickly the longer this goes. It's advantage Sting. As Rhino just sitting there trying to, hearing the count, trying to will himself to his feet. You wonder if he even has the power. Rhino slowly makes his way, rolling underneath that bottom rope, and Sting right on him, drives that boot into the open cut, right into the open wound in the head. Well, he's just busted it wide open again, and I mean, he tried to get it taped up. Rhino was trying to do anything he could do to patch himself up to make it out here, but now Sting, it's about keeping that world title belt. And, he, and when Sting put his forehead right into the, the title belt here in front of us, it opened it up again, and Sting in total control of this matchup. You can just see the pain in Rhino's face. Sting with the bear hug, trying to just take all that energy right out of the war machine, Rhino. Severely beaten prior to the match by the main event Mafia, and now Sting trying to get him to that point to weaken him where he can put him away. Just pulling in tight, just taking the air out. Earl Hebner tapping, trying to get this thing to move along, but Sting knows what he's doing, and he puts that elbow right into the gut. Oh, and he's back into the bear hug again. Think of the pressure here that Rhino is feeling when it comes to, to his back. 
the bear hug applied here by Sting. We, we've heard word that, that Rhino had his back injured, Don. The trainers sent word out. They didn't want him to come out for this match. We know he had a back injury, among other things, suffered today in the beating by the main event mafia, but he insisted because this was his opportunity to become TNA World Heavyweight Champion that he was going to step up to the plate regardless. Well, who was going to stop him? I mean, you saw the look in the War Machine's face. Who was going to stop him? Nobody. I mean, after what the Main Event Mafia did, he wanted to find some way to come back here and stick it to him. And there was no way anybody was going to stand in his way. But right now, Sting taking advantage of the injured Rhino, just doing what he wants. Just that bear hug, pulling tight, and just taking it out, taking the steam out of Rhino, and you can see it. Well, you sure can. As Sting adds the pressure to the bear hug. Each time he cranks it just a little bit more, you see that Rhino just screams out in pain. You just wonder what's going through Rhino's mind. He's trying to find an opening of any sort, any way, shape, or form to break the grip. But you can see Sting just not letting go, and the arm drops from the war machine. It's just, he, he just doesn't have the strength. It drops again. I mean, it was a heroic, valiant effort. Look out. But you can't, oh, look at him now. Boy, on the verge of the three is referee Hebner raising the arms of Rhino to see, but before that arm dropped down for the third time, Rhino was able to stop it, and now gonna try and break the bear hug. Shots to the back. Sting shoots him off into the ropes, and Rhino got a little momentum on his side here. Well, he just used the ropes there to bring that big shoulder right into Sting. But again, he just always goes to the small of his back. It, it's just... The pain is obviously so sharp shooting down there. He can't stop it. But he, here he goes as he brings his shoulder block again into Sting. Boy, and almost when he made contact with that shoulder block in the corner. With every offensive move, it's Rhino covers and two count. With every offensive move from Rhino, you can just sense how much pain he's in. I mean, I, I'm no doctor and wouldn't want to pretend to be, but you, you think about slip discs and damaged discs and, and who knows what's happened to the back. And anybody that's had back... Oh, Gore! Gore! Gore, is this it? Sting realizes it and he rolls himself out. You gotta give him credit. He couldn't allow Rhino to get on top of him at that point. That was one of those Gores, Don, that was almost like half Gore, half shoulder block because he didn't have that opportunity to go all the way into the corner, wait for Sting, get him in his sights, and then come charging at him with full speed. And also, with this back injury, the way he's favoring his back, one would presume that the effectiveness of the gore would be weakened. And you got to consider if he could even get down to the crotch that he normally does when he when he goes into the gore. I mean, to do that, he's putting the back in severe pain. So I think in, in his mind, like you said, it was a half of one, but it was all that he had with him at the time. But now he's up Look high. at this. All or nothing from the top. You rarely see him go that high risk. And it was not good for Rhino because Sting was able to roll out of the way. And now Sting going to put him in the Scorpion here, and he turns him over. And again, keep and in mind the with back. the Scorpion applied, where this affects Rhino the most on, it's that already injured back. Oh, and you can see as he's got it cinched in, and, and, and Rhino now, he's just got to fight through the pain. He's trying to push himself up. Is there any way? And you can see he grabs a hold of the rope. And look at this, Sting pulls him right back out into the middle. Desperation move by Rhino to just crawl across. Doesn't pay off because Sting torques back and pulls him in that scorpion right back out to the middle again. And Rhino, boy, you can see right there that close-up look on the hand of Rhino to see if he was going to tap out or not. Referee Earl Hebner right there looking at it just point blank to see what Rhino does. I mean, he's talking to him. And then Rhino able to break and grab a hold of the rope. That time, full contact made with the rope in the mind of Earl Hebner, not just barely grazing or touching it, forces Sting to break, and Sting goes right back to the Scorpion again, but he's kicked off with the free leg. Well, Rhino just had to. It was desperation to get the boots up, but you can see Rhino can barely move. He can barely move, but he does now. He's gonna go from that belly to belly, and he hits it. Caught him with it, dropped him with the belly to belly, and Rhino back up to his feet. Rhino heads to the corner, oh, drops down. Do this could be the gore that he's looking for. And he can't, as he just doesn't have enough speed. Doesn't have enough, and there is a Scorpion death drop. As Sting hits it, Sting's got it, Sting retains. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is still TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, the Icon Sting! Can't feel that great about that victory. He knows the condition that Rhino was in.
The crowd reaction here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It pertains to the years and years that Sting has competed in this city. But I'm going to tell you this. You can deny involvement all you want in this beating that Rhino suffered at the hands of the main event mafia. But Sting, you weren't afraid to take advantage and retain your TNA championship belt tonight. Let's send it to the back. Jeremy Borash, are you there? Take it, JB. I am here with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, brother Devon of Team 3D, and the one and only Mick Foley, who returns to the ring tonight. Gentlemen, I have to ask you, two of your brothers down in the front line, things have not gone very well for you guys today. In fact, I gotta ask you, at the end of the day, it's just the three of you, what are you guys gonna do? You giving up on us, JB? I mean, that's what it sounds like. You giving up on us? I've heard it said already that uh, the front line is a bunch of cubs compared to the main event mafia. I, I get it. I get it. We're the underdogs. I get that. I like that. We like being the underdogs. It drives us. We work well under pressure. Well, nah, you know what? Tonight's special. See, it's special because they're not going to keep us down. You can keep knocking us down. We're going to keep getting up, and it gets better. See, I'm doing this for one of my boys. Joe, this is for you and your newborn son. You know something, Borash? I'm not going to do a whole bunch of yelling. Hell, I ain't even going to scream. I don't have it in me to do that. But you see, I feel where AJ is coming from. I know he feels Joe's pain. But with all due respect, Brother Ray, he wasn't my friend. He was my brother. You know something, bro? I spoke to you a few minutes ago on the phone and made a promise. And I guarantee you that I will keep that promise. You don't have to worry. The front line will take care of business. Oh, my brother Mick, testify! One big question on my mind, JB, and the question is not, who will the partner be for the main event mafia? The question at hand is, who will your partner be? Which Mick Foley is going to show up tonight? Will it be the sensitive guy who gets misty-eyed when Old Yeller dies, or the guy who took place in some of the wildest matchups in the history of this business? Now, if I was the main event mafia, if I was Scott Steiner, I was Booker T, or I was their suitable replacement, I'd be asking myself one simple question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punks? Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. I think I know who's showing up. <laughs> Look at the bodies laid out all over the HD impact zone, courtesy of the main event mafia. Everybody loves the men of Mafia so much that they want to live their pathetic lives through us. When it comes to the main event Mafia, this is their world, and we're playing under their rules. This is the greatest assemblage of world champions to ever come together. You five represent everything that is wrong with the wrestling business. Nobody messes with the main event Mafia. Yeah! Unleash something that you should have never unleashed. I'm an original. You want somebody? Go back to me. And Genesis, Mick Foley is crossing the line. I walk a little slower. I stumble a little bit when I talk. And I'm not a handsome man. But I am the hardcore legend at Genesis. The hardcore legend is coming home. I may not be as good as I once was, but for one night, I will be as good as I ever was. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your TNA Genesis final main event contest, a six-man tag team clutch match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, representing the main event mafia, Accompanied by Charmel, the TNA Legends Champion, Booker T, and Big Papa Pop, Scott Steiner! Boy, I think back to that night in Las Vegas, Nevada. The special impact broadcast on... And the, the night that the main event Mafia was born. 
I don't think any of us at that point in time had any idea of what we were about to see. It has culminated tonight with yet another injury, with Jeff Jarrett being stretchered out. Of course, we heard earlier about the hospitalization of Kevin Nash, who was scheduled to compete in this match. How are the main event mafia going to address Kevin Nash's absence? That's the main, excuse me, the main dollar question. You know you can't go in there two on three. You just, you got to be smart. You got to find somebody that was here. And let's hear what Booker T has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to inform you all that Kevin Nash, the best big man in the business, will not be here tonight. You see, Kevin Nash suffered a staph infection in the elbow. But you see, you see, we have found an exceptional replacement. And right now, I would like to introduce him to you, to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you QT Kip. <laughs> Kip James is going to be the replacement Give it up for, him, ladies and gentlemen. for Kevin Nash. Give it up for him. Give it. Ah. Give it up for him. And you think about this for a second, Don. Give it up for him. They have brought in a tag team specialist. Thank you. You think back to this guy's Thank career you. and everything that he's accomplished. The New Age Outlaws, Degeneration X. Of course, prior to the main event, Mafia, one of the biggest factions ever. A guy who's been there in so many big, high-profile matches through the years and has had so many championship belts, tag team titles. I think something in the neighborhood of like 10 World Tag Team Championship reigns. Think about this, too. They bring in a guy with exceptional size and power. I mean, they had to make a, a call on George up this year. Kip Day. You know, first of all, let me thank you, Booker, for having me out here. But let me assure you, I have the credentials to be standing here. Don't let the cute kid thing throw you off. I am a true badass. I am a tag team champion of 10 times. Two time intercontinental champion and hardcore champion. And you know you can count on me, unlike the crappy Carolina Panthers. Because they absolutely suck! How do I get the crowd on your side? Ladies and gentlemen, now opponents representing the TNA Bloodline first from New York City, one half of Team 3D. moments ago from brother Devon talking about how he going into this match is sending this one to his brother brother Ray in team 3D well it's family to him I mean that's what it is they've been through everything together traveled the world together and that that beat down on brother Ray was as vicious as anything we've seen until tonight when Jeff Garrett or Ray got in the ring I'll tell you he's ready for revenge We heard Brother Davon dedicate this match to Brother Ray of Team 3D. Similar situation for the phenomenal AJ Styles as he's going to send this one out to Samoa Joe. I mean, Samoa Joe with the arm severely damaged through the chair, also just had the birth of his son. This is special to AJ.
flannel of Brother Ray. I've got to tell you, he repeatedly warned them. He told them time and time again that he wasn't going to put up with the gangland type hits, the gangland type violence. And when the main event mafia continued their ways, he told us all it was time to cross that line and get physically involved. Which Mick Foley are we going to see tonight? I've got an idea which one oh, it's going to be. You heard him. He knows he's, he's older and slower and grayer. And he's not as good as he once was, was his exact words, but tonight. Whoa. It's hope, Scott hope, we've got, hope we've got seven second delay yeah. working tonight here at Genesis with Scott Steiner with some salty words for Don West. Well, he knew I was talking in reverence about Mick Foley and obviously he's worried about him a little bit. He tried to send the message out there not to do it, but you heard him tonight. Mick said he's going to put it all on the line and be as good as ever. When you've got AJ Styles and Brother Devon with you by your side, that's pretty good company. Now everybody just kind of trying to show everybody who's as bigger. It starts and there they go. And look at Mick Foley with those shots for Kip James. Meanwhile, AJ Styles sent out to the floor by Scott Steiner. Brother Devon, Booker T fighting right here and they go up the rim. God, it's broken down already. Well, Mick Foley getting his juices going as he close legs Kip James and then just spins him around. Puts his head on the mat as this thing is going crazy. Devon over here on the rail. Brother Devon is, is taking it to Booker T. And AJ Styles taking advantage of Scott Steiner. Watch Mick Foley. Watch Mick Foley. Hardcore legend up on the top. And boy, look at them scatter. Oh, they don't want to have that big body land on top of them. That's the last thing they want to do is get Mick Foley all charged up. Just what we anticipated. He asked the question, which Mick Foley are we going to see? And I think Booker T, Scott Steiner, and Kip James can answer that question. You can see these three guys in the ring, standing tall together, trying to get calmed down as, as the main event mafia with Kip James as a replacement for Kevin Nash for tonight. They're trying to get themselves figured out, and you got to figure they're there. Their chemistry's got to be a little off because that's one thing about the main event mafia is they just have that family feel. And with Kevin Nash out tonight, it's going to take them a minute to regroup, I think. Mike. Think of how important this match is for the TNA front line, especially, Don, after what we have witnessed earlier tonight here at Genesis. After seeing Rhino defeated by Sting, after seeing Kurt Angle not only beat Jeff Jarrett, but then injure him and Jarrett stretchered out. This match is so vitally important to the future of the TNA front line. This is one of the reasons they brought Kip James in. He is a strong son of a gun. You can't deny it. He really is. He's just big, maybe even the biggest man in that ring right now, and he's just a, a physical specimen, but you can see that's what I'm talking about, but look at how agile AJ is. Lands on his feet, and then goes right after Kip James. Shoots him off in the corner, off the leapfrog. AJ drops down. Kip what? James off the ropes, and he's met with a drop kick. Nobody does it better. Nobody. It's the phenomenal drop kick, and when he hits it, it is a thing of beauty. Kip James wants to roll out of there. He's had enough at this point. He's tagging in Booker T. TNA Legends champion set here. Now to square off with AJ Styles. Boy, Kip trying to regroup after that kick. Boy, that one really caught him, didn't it? Tell you what, you can see Booker now trying to... Oh, AJ, how about this? He wants to share the wealth. As I think he brother, brother Devon Brother did. Devon asked for that. You saw Devon and Booker square off right at the outset of this match. And here comes Devon with the charge. And this one's for Brother Ray. Well, you could just feel it in the punches from Brother Devon as he just goes right out. Look at a beatdown. Just shot after shot after shot on Booker T. Rudy Charles telling him, hey, you got to open the hand up. Yeah, right. Try to stop him. Booker puts on the brakes and extends the leg. Gets that kick right into the chest. Full shot with a leg lariat. Oh, and out of the chops. It doesn't even phase Devon, who comes right back. Big right hands directly between the eyes and tags in. And here comes the hardcore legend. The executive shareholder of TNA, Mick Foley, is in. You can see him now working together with Brother Devon as they send him a Booker T against the ropes. And, oh, nice running knee right there by Mick Foley. Here we go. One, two, not enough yet.
And as Booker regroups and tries to get back up, Mick Foley is right on him. He motions across to AJ. He says, give me a boot. And then he takes Booker to the far side and puts him face first right into Styles' boot. I know it's not the way they normally do things, but I mean, you don't care. I, I think that AJ and Devon and Mick take every cheap shortcut that they can take. Just like that that you saw Booker T do, because you know they'll do it. Whatever you can, you got to humiliate the main event mafia. You got to beat them at their own game. You got to bring them down to, to their level and, and just do whatever it takes. Tag team specialist that the main event mafia has employed here tonight at Genesis to take the place of Kevin Nash. Kip James in. AJ, a couple of shots, but boy, he got cut off that time. Knee right into the gut. Stop Styles. Kip going to take AJ now and shoot him off. But look at AJ. When he goes into the corner, he drops both Booker and Steiner. Uh, he sees opportunities where others doesn't. Two, oh, you can see the strength there of Kip James as he kicks him off. And, whoa, what a boot. AJ went head first in it. Boy, AJ is just dazed by that kick. And now the opportunity for Big Papa Pump, the genetic freak, Scott Steiner, to unleash. And he goes right in the boots, right to the head of Styles. Brings AJ back up to his feet. And as he gets shot off, Steiner line just dropped him, ringing out the arm. And you know he's going to drop that elbow. Now here come the push ups. Just to let him know who's in charge. That's why he does it. Sends the message to everybody. Intimid he's gonna do it his way. Intimidation tactics, not just for his opponent, AJ Styles, but also referee Rudy Charles. The chop to the chest, and he brings AJ right back up again and shoots him off, and now AJ's in trouble in the corner. Boy, he's in the wrong spot, as you can see Booker T and Kip both holding him down. And now Booker T gets himself back in, and they've got AJ where they want him, and AJ's one of those guys that they know how good he is. They know he's special. They know there's just something about him that, something that he can do things that they'll never be able to do. And that's why they'll work together anytime they can to bring AJ down. Booker circles around Styles and catching him with shots from every conceivable angle here. AJ is in trouble as he gets shot off again, and Booker goes for the kick, but look at AJ! Unbelievable. It wasn't the full-fledged Pele, but he spins from the side and catches the, the foot to the head of Booker. And I'm telling you, it's just to have that awareness of where you're at. As you see Kip coming in and stomping AJ down so he can't get a tag on Mick Foley or Brother Devon. Boy, almost like a last-ditch effort that time by Styles, but it wasn't enough to enable him to get over and tag in either Mick Foley or Brother Devon. There it is, Pele! Oh, you just don't see it coming. It's just unreal, and when he hits it, the crowd just reacts because they know they're watching the guy to fight gravity. You see everybody reaching in, trying to get a tag. Great shot right there over the shoulders of Mick Foley and brother Devon. And as AJ comes to their side, he picks Mick Foley, and here comes the hardcore legend in on Kip James. Nice shot to Kip. He's got a shot for Booker. Another great shot to Kip James, trying to decide where he wants to go. And he goes after Kip James, and then he's a shot for Steiner. He's just taking one of them at a time. Rapid fire rights now from Foley, but as he turns around, give a little bang, bang to the crowd, and he got dropped by Steiner. Well, that's Mick just getting himself back into the, the feel of things, back into the wrestling mode. Look out! Oh, man, big pop of pump. Scott Steiner just flung Brother Devon, and again, this is broken out into a fight right here in front of us. Styles and Booker square off. Devon, Steiner, there goes Devon into the steel. Oh, it is just completely falling apart here. I'll tell you what, you're running the risk of being in the front row right now. It's guardrails are getting creamed all over the place. As you see Big Papa Pump. Oh, wait a minute. There's... Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rudy Charles has counted all the men out. It's a double count out. There is no winner in this match. Throwing a disqualification out there. And you know what? That's exactly what the main event mafia wanted. You're not kidding. I take a not look at the... quite that's... so fast! Wait a minute. That's Cornette's voice. There he is. I've been coming to Charlotte, North Carolina for 25 years now. And we don't do things like that down here. So by the power vested in me as part of TNA management, referee Rudy Charles, I order you to restart this match. Absolutely. You don't let it end this way. Hold on, hold on one damn minute, Cornette. I knew it. 
You know it. And everybody in TNA know it. You ain't got the authority to do that. So this match by the power invested in me is over. Corey, Corey, he's right. You do not have the authority to restart this match. What the hell you talking about? But as executive shareholder here at TNA, I have the authority to restart the match. And not only that, but we're going to restart it under hardcore rules. Oh! And here we go. Ring the bell. That pretty much means anything goes. Everything goes. No disqualifications. It's become a fight. Another war. What a night that we've had here. And we're going to just turn them all loose. Hardcore rules. Anything, everything goes. Good luck, Rudy Charles, to try and maintain law and order with these six. I'll tell you what, your best bet is just to try to stay out of the way. And, oh! oh, you see Carver's can come out. It's going to be absolutely anything that's not nailed down can be used. Trash can shot in to Booker, but as he goes to pick up the can, AJ's right on him and caught him with the kick. Well, this is exactly what Mick Foley wanted if he's going to do it. Wait a minute. Mick Foley up on the ramp. Beating the hell out of Kip James up at that part of the building here in Charlotte, and AJ kicking the can right at Booker T. Mick Foley just sent the garbage can flinging down there. And he's got Mick Kidd, he's gonna feed him! No! Oh. He feeds him right to Brother d and he slams him right in the head! Big shot to the head. What's Mick Foley having that trash can? I got steel chairs, got all kinds of things. Kendo sticks. Crowd letting you know what else they want to see in this matchup. Nothing would surprise me at this point. That's for sure. As Mick Foley has Booker T and he slams him right against the rail. Oh, they've squared off. Steiner trying to put the trash can over the top of AJ Styles, and AJ just crowned him right in the top of the head. What a right shot by Mick Foley right on the side of Booker T's head. Booker turns around. Oh, unbelievable. He just sent it Foley right over the table. Booker Back body dropped him right here onto the table and onto the floor and right on top of me. I'll tell you what, the strength Booker T showed unreal there is Mick Foley struggling to his feet. Folks, we may lose contact as we're hardwired in here. Look out! Look out! Mike! Mick Foley takes Booker and drops him over the guardrail. And Foley fighting through headsets and everything else. Look out! Oh, God! Get the table! Foley tells Brother Devon to get the tables, and Brother Devon's going underneath the ring, and he's bringing out the wood. I'll tell you what, Mick Foley just turned this thing into the match that he wanted, a match that he's so good at as they're bringing the tables out. Booker T still here behind us. Look out, look out here. We got Booker T here from behind us. We got Mick Foley. Where's he going? Mick Foley's going to the top of the broadcast table. You can see Kip James is laid out. Oh, oh the low blow by Booker T. Booker T just caught him as Mick Foley goes down. Wait a minute, AJ's going to fly. What an unbelievable shot by AJ as Scott Steiner has Devon up in the ring. Mick Foley down, AJ down, Kip James down, Booker T trying to crawl back. Scott Steiner gonna try and suplex brother Devon. He's got him hooked in the belly to belly and Devon fights him off. Boy, Devon trying to get his footing. You can see he's having a, a tough time going up to the top and here he comes off the top. Oh, caught him with the diving headbutt.
Booker T now finds himself in the ring. I don't know if Brother Devon realizes it. He doesn't, and he gets caught by the axe kick. Caught him right in the back of the head. Knockout blow. Hardcore legend Mick Foley going to roll in at the same time, and he's going to bring out the sock. He's got it. And while the spin of is going on, he doesn't realize he's about to be put in the mandible claw. He's got him in the mandible claw. Steiner from behind with the trash can shot. It's just broken down here. As you figured it would when it went hardcore like this. AJ Styles took himself out as he took out Kip. He's still wiped out in front of us. Steiner just slid. Steiner just slid into the ring and he's got a chair. Oh no, it's two on one now on Mick Foley. And he just brought the chair right into the back. Right into the back of Mick. And now. Booker T, Scott Steiner, going to work in tandem, going to work together with the steel chair in the middle of the ring. They're going to try and drive Foley into it. Here's the axe kick. No. And Foley fights back. Look at those right shots by Mick Foley showing you he's still got it in him. And now he's using the chair, the point of the chair, into the gut. Foley getting the chair. Going to wind up with it. And shot. Crack right down on Booker T. Oh, look at this. He's going to bring him up. He's got a chair out, DDT right into the chair. Steiner DDT. face first, count. Big Foley's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners and winners. Number five, Billy Beamer, and now AJ Styles, and the hardcore legend, Big Foley. Remember what Mick Foley said. I may not be as good as I once was, but for one night, I'll be as good as I ever was. And tonight, here in Genesis, Mick Foley I'll tell you what, Brother d picking up AJ so he can celebrate with him after sacrificing his body. But the DDT of Scott Steiner right on the face of that chair was not in court. And the front line gets an incredible, incredible victory tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in Genesis, the main event mafia won the battle. Sting defeating Rhino, Kurt Angle injuring Jeff Jarrett. But in the end, the front line wins the war. Thanks to Mick Foley! TNA Wrestling. Cross the line.